journey for qualification resumes as the World Surf League arrives in Sydney, Australia for the second stop on the 2023 Challenger Series. There's no gimmies on the Challenger Series. Every round is an elimination round. With a rich history of competitive surfing, iconic North Narrabeen is back on the world stage to showcase its breathtaking beach breaks and the next generation of surfing superstars. 80 men and 48 women clash in pursuit of the same dream, getting one step closer to the WSL Championship Tour. For the world's most promising surfers, the quest continues here at the GWM Sydney Surf Pro, presented by Bonsoy. GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonzoi. Checking out Jackson Baker arriving to the beach. Cole Hauschman with some warm ups. Jacob Wilcox will be involved today taking a look at the surf and his preparation. Isabella Nichols looks ready with a couple of DHD boards arriving to North Narrabeen. And Sally Fitzgibbons ready for battle flying by on our Sydney flight cam, and we can see that over the evening, the surf has grown exponentially. Fresh swell hitting the beaches here, northern beaches of Sydney. I'm Kaipo, along with former CT surfer Richie Lovett, as well as Luke Kennedy joining me. And I'm going to go with you, Luke. Um, whole different. What a difference a day makes. Completely, yeah. Fresh south swell rolling through. There's some absolute bombs down the beach on the car park rights. But uh, the main break is looking really contestable, but it's going to test every bit of the surfer's skill and knowledge to get the win today. We've got big currents, big waves. It's going to be interesting. Strategy today, Rich, I'm, I'm looking to you. Yeah, well, uh, I think we saw in those opening shots there, uh, strategy is bring a couple extra boards. Uh, they're a little bit longer, lots of rounded pins today, and that's because the, the swell has jumped, as you said, significantly. Uh, but there is definitely some, some uh, waves out there that, that are going to offer some really big scores, uh, but it's going to be a different sort of an approach. Really interesting matchup to start this off. But uh, yeah, I'm excited to get this underway and, and we're going to crown some champs. This is going to be great. <laughs> Let's get the news from Stace on the beach. Uh, what's going on today, Stace? Yeah, thanks, Kype. So obviously we're finishing this thing off, but Will, how much time are you giving the competitors today? Yeah, uh, it's pretty challenging out there. So we're, we've offered 40 minute heats to our surfers. Uh, we're excited for finals day 2.0 and um, there's some pretty good ones out there, but it is going to take um, a bit of um, strategy and picking the right ones, but um, I'm excited to see how it unfolds. Well, as long as the competitors avoided after party 1.0, they should be fine for finals <laughs> day. Thanks, Kipes. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, well, there you go. 40 minute heats, and rightfully so, um, given the conditions and the fact that we are uh, taking a look um, at, you know, the pointy and the draw. Let's take a look at our men's. Bailey Ladders Bracket. Talk about the pointy and the draw. We just got the semifinals and the finals for the men to complete. Jackson Baker and Cole Hauschman will be that first matchup, Rich. Yeah, uh, this is a, a great matchup. Aussie versus uh, the USA's Cole Hauschman. You know, Jackson, uh, the natural footer. Will we see him go down to the alley right? And will we see Cole Hauschman stick to those left? Both are on offer at the moment. There's even uh, the bombies kind of peeking in, breaking up that swell line a little bit. Uh, so a, a real heavy hitting matchup there, two really gnarly power surfers. Uh, so this first matchup is going to be fantastic. And, a, you know, again, guinea pig heat, first heat of the day. Well, let's see the, the strategy. Heat two is going to be watching those guys really carefully. Yeah, heat two uh, with Jacob Wilcox and Marco Mignot. Another goofy foot, regular foot matchup, Luke. Yeah, I've got to say, uh, Jacob is the favorite for me in the heavy water conditions. Uh, he comes from, a, you know, obviously a place where he's very comfortable in big, powerful surf. Uh, we haven't seen him go left often this week, but he has a really strong back front side. We haven't seen Marco on the backhand, so I'm curious to see what happens. 
Yeah, and it's like we said, we alluded to, once we get uh, this going, it's a whole different ball game today um, out at North Narrabeen. Uh, so much water, and we were just watching it. You know, we we're on hold this morning, watching for the conditions, watching for how contestable it was going to be. The, the tides filled in. We're near the high tide mark right now, Rich. Uh, so got a little bit more water, but I think at this size, I don't know how much tide's really going to matter. Yeah, and we don't have a lot of surfing to get done today. And uh, we did uh, come down early and, and, you know, there was still this swell was building. We hadn't really seen the peak of it. Uh, it was a little bit late, uh, what was showing on the chart. So it's definitely arrived now uh, since this morning. I, I think it's, you know, maybe three or four feet bigger than when we actually woke up this morning. So uh, you'll see here, there's a lot of water moving around. But Kipes, you can't say that we haven't delivered variety over this event. <laughs> they have had everything. It's going to be exciting. <laughs> I mean, today is going to be an exciting day. We're starting off this matchup with Jackson Baker versus Cole Hauschman. These two surfers have met up before in the past. It was in 2021 at the Male Visla Pro. That it was in Aracera it was on the Challenger Series, of course. Uh, and that's Jackson took the win over Cole Hauschman in that matchup. So we'll see if Cole can do the payback out here. Jackson Baker on your screen, 26 years old, the Novocastrian who has uh, relinquished to the Challenger Series after not surviving that mid-season cut on the championship tour. Wants to fight his way back onto that championship tour. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, that's where we feel like Jackson should be, I, I think, out of... You know, all the commentator pits, we, we, most of us or all of us had, had Jackson on there as uh, one of the guys who would, who would re-qualify, get back on the tour. He's just, uh, he's just too strong. Power game is right there. His maneuvers have, have just gotten better over the last 12 months. A little bit more precision in his game, and he's competing better too now. Yeah, the interesting thing about Jackson is he's got the, the image of the knockabout Aussie bloke, but he actually has a very polished surfing style. And it's really easy on the eye. Great rail game. It's going to be the goofy foot to start. This Cole Hauschman in the blue jersey. Nice layback half. Powerful surfer oh, Cole. Yes. One more time. 6-3, this guy. He's got a big frame. And he's able to use that additional leverage to his advantage on that left, Rich. Oh, I love that second turn. And uh, got the grunts already. <laughs> Uh, but I can't help it when I see a, a power turn laid down like that it, in, and just moving so much water. As we see here, just rolling in. Cole Houseman, you said 6'3". 90 plus kilos, Rich. Just so much muscle. Goes for the layback hit first up. I love just how smooth that transition was from that first to second turn. Just got straight back on that inside rail, dug straight in and had so much power. He let right into it. And uh, yeah, this is going to be a great start. Talked to Cole this morning, and he was really, he was fired up. And he said, look it, because there is there is there is an option. This swell is going to stick around. It'll be probably smaller and more in control tomorrow. But Cole yeah. was already saying, hey, I want to be out there. Let's go. Like, I, I want to surf these big lefts. And he got his wish. He was out there in the big lefts uh, this morning for a free surf. Ooh. Jackson Baker, look at this thing. Jacko, long bottom turn, tight snap off the top, back into the lift, and always yeah. solid with the finish. Jackson Baker fires back. Yeah, that's a, a good comeback wave for Jackson Baker. The two hits on the backhand, you can see the, the contrast in styles now. And uh, Cole Hauschman will have, uh, I don't know whether you'd call it a, an advantage, but uh, on the forehand, he gets eyes down the line. Whereas just, Jackson, yeah, playing just, into this one, mate. Just a beautiful looking way, big open face card. Straight up into the lip, two turns in quick succession in the slow-mo. Marks back into the pocket. And this is a big section. Gets good projection, solid landing, and rides out clean. Great first exchange. Yeah, really good. And again, just like Cole Hauschman, you could see Jackson from that first hit onto the second one. There was no loss of speed. And uh, just got on his heel side rail, jammed straight up for that final hit. I think that's going to be key, Rich. There's not going to be a lot of time. You're not going to have the chance to have too much time between the turns. You're going to have to get up and down mm. pretty quick to get it done. Yeah. I said before, oh, what a difference just the day makes. It's just a stark contrast to yesterday <laughs> what we saw. For more on the conditions, I'm going to go down to the beach with Stace.
Thanks, Kipes, here with an Oakberry Surf Conditions update. I couldn't do it just by myself this morning. I had to find someone who only gets out of bed when it's XXL all the way from South Narra. Kobe Clements, how are you, son? Yeah, I'm good. It's good, Stace. Stoked to be here. There's waves up and down the coast and, yeah, it's heaps of swell where the comp is right now. And, yeah, it's going to be a sick day. How big are you calling it out there, mate? Ah, uh, there's like the odd eight-footer. The bombie's breaking, but I think the boys are like, getting the little six footers doing big turns and yeah it should be mental thanks for your time kobe thanks Kibes. hey that's uh one of the things about big wave surfers hard to hard to get them to really commit to it to the <laughs> size i mean it feels bigger. i always undercook it it, it feels bigger it feels it. bigger to me than that and the same thing happens back at home for me in, in hawaii uh Kipes, if you'd been out there for a free surf and, and stace had interviewed you yeah. I'm calling, we'd be calling it, well, maybe not you because you're from Hawaii. No, I'll be honest. I'd be calling it 10 foot. I'm, I'm going 10 foot too. I like I saw legitimate 10 foot waves yeah. out there this morning. Well, just on my way up uh, the coast, it I, I, as I came around the Long Reef headland, all the outer bombings are breaking. It's 12 to 15 feet out there. Uh, you know, we're on the other side of, of the Long Reef headland, so we're a little bit more protected here, but it is copping the brunt of the swell. And you saw the bombie here breaking this morning. It was 10 foot off the back of the bombie. I'm surprising a couple of guys didn't paddle out. But some of the uh, the waves on the car park rights were just atomic. Yeah, we saw Crosby Colapinto got a bomb this morning and just did the sacrifice. We got numbers in for that first exchange with Cole Hauschman out in the lead with the early advantage. Seven point ride for Hauschman, 6.33 for Jackson Baker. Nice numbers to start off the yeah, day, Rich. I like it. I think the scale's good. I think the spread is good between them. Uh, I did feel like Cole just had, uh, he had the edge. It was just a little bit more variety, a um, bit of a cleaner, well put together wave, those three turn combination. And uh, Jackson, his maneuvers were strong in particular, that final one. So some good numbers there, promising signs. And I, I love the matchup between the quintessential Australian and really the all-American guy. I mean, Cole did his posted interview yesterday and he had the camo hat on and he sounded like a Marine about to go into battle. He was just in <laughs> military mode. Jacko, I think he was sort of, you know, he was off to the pub for a beer and a punt on race five at Randwick and it was just such a stark contrast. Yeah, well, there were uh, a few celebrations going down last night. Yeah, I want to thank Mexicano. Uh, for, some, for a great time right here, <laughs> right here on the beach. What a welcoming crew we have over there. Um, great yeah. margaritas. Highly recommended. So with this extra time, we're going to see some extra action. And I also feel when these guys are quick to get scores, we will see a seesawing of placings throughout this, Rich, because we still got 32 minutes of surfing action yeah, on the Yeah, it's nice. Farm. It's nice that we've got that extra 10 minutes in these heats. It's, uh, they're obviously bigger paddle outs. There's a lot of water moving out there. These guys are just trying to, to uh, identify these end sections. A couple of wider ones, too, down there that we just saw some promising signs. But th these guys are way out there, right off that that North Narrabeen Peak, just hanging on the edge of the rip there. That's the perfect spot that you want to be. Yeah, Chris Enover made the point earlier, he's doing the beach commentary, but that rip is just roaring out to sea. So if you put yourself in the middle of it, you're going to find it really hard to uh, maintain position. So it's kind of a case of sit on the edge, maybe snipe in and grab a set when they come through, but stay out of it. Yeah, yeah I'm sure the game of cat and mouse will be played throughout the day, given the conditions and that rip. You can see the surfers paddling up against it as a set rears itself. And look at the size today. And this isn't even a big set. This is one of those medium sets coming through. Yeah, there's some deeper ones that are actually way more surfable and way more rideable. And then there's a couple of wide lefts that have a certain allure that we saw some heavy closeouts on the end section. Mm, yeah, it's, um, you know, you're putting it on the line today and uh, can see if there's a there's a little bit of texture, a little bit of wobble in the water, but that's pretty indicative of a, of a new swell that has so much grunt. Uh, this has come up pretty fast, and we knew it was going to, um, you know, it's going to come up fast, and it's actually going to drop off pretty fast yeah. overnight as well. So uh, this is what we're seeing now. This is pretty much the peak of the swell, and uh, well, it's kind of unanimous when we saw the free surf. You know, everyone came in and said, "There's waves out there. We've got to get this thing going." 
Yeah, I was speaking to uh, Matt Shinovsky, uh, the Waxhead, had a surf out there this morning. He did point out something interesting is that there was a bloom of jellyfish out in the water. And that bloom of jellyfish, it just sounds funny, is um, actually got on his board and made his board slippery. Oh, really? Yeah. So I don't know if that was an odd one-off. Uh, he came in, he's all, feel my, feel my board, feel my wax. And I'm just like, whoa, dude, like, what'd Pretty you do? You, yeah. Well, did you did oh, you wow. did you use warm water wax today or something? He says no. Like, like I had to bail my board a couple times. Came up in a bunch in a bloom of jellyfish, and then ever since then I lost my my, my traction out there. Wow. Is there any rule against throwing a jellyfish at your competitor? <laughs> <laughs> but I guess they're the friendly jellyfish. They're the non-stinging type. No, but there has been lately. There's been a lot of the uh, the kind of giant size yeah, orange been, ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they're, they're slippery and they're itchy. And, uh, yeah, you don't want to get clubbed by one in the head by a set either. They're pretty solid. Yeah, there's a lot of sea lice hang around too, huh? When the jellyfish come, it feels like the sea lice, are, they get involved as well. But, um, yeah, Lo have a look at that. It's Love these views from the Feel New Sydney flight cam that we've been employing throughout the these event. Day number six here. Took us six days to get to finals, but I have no problem with that given the excitement that we are in store for today. Yeah. I, I feel like it was almost a fortunate, it was a, it was, it was a fortunate, mis not mistake, but it was a fortunate <laughs> circumstance yesterday. Yeah. That this came God, through. I think we called it. Yeah I, 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 yeah. yeah, I call that. You know, the storm came through, the wind came up. We had to clip the event. We were planning on running through the finals, but look at what we got today. Hauschman on his backup. Got to deal with some foam here and some ribs. Powers through that first turn, eases through a second turn, up in the lip, strong surfing by the surfer from San Clemente. How about one of these on the head as you're paddling back out? Yeah, we may see the odd run around today, Rich. What do you think? Yeah, could do. That alley right uh, escalator is uh, may come into play. It's a pretty uh, pretty easy run out there if you can time it right. I think Jacko may know a little bit more about that than Cole, but we'll see. He's getting washed back in right now. It's a heavy paddle out. Yeah. Let's take a look at the replay, Rich. Yeah, it's kind of an inside up, but it cleans up well. So Cole just comes off the bottom here. Bit of a check snap down the line. It's a nice wrap. And then I like how he just sort of tags this off the lip. So clean, good rhythm to this wave. Nothing, nothing as extraordinary as like on that first wave. No big sensational moment for it to be undeniably a uh, an excellent score but it's uh, for me it feels like a mid-range score and a great backup to the seven yeah cole's got to be feeling good you know this is his best result ever on a challenger series he's been doing this series since the get-go he's two years on the challenger series and he has finally kind of cracked into that finals day feeling luke yeah i mean the interesting thing for me about cole is he's six foot three but he rides quite high in the saddle, so he sort of surfs quite high. Someone like Owen Wright, who's really tall, compresses a lot of that. But Cole is more like a Geordie Smith, where he surfs tall, and what that tends to do is make everything look big. He surfs big. Yeah, upright stance on his Mayhem surfboard. Matt Biolis has uh, identified Cole Hauschman from a very young age and supported him in, with his equipment. And he's the, uh, the sole survivor of the 2 percenter crew. The conversation stays alive. I, I mean, th th those concepts have been around for a while. I think before the Momentum crew, it was the OAM crew, Rich. And uh, I think that inspired a response from the Australians back in your era with LMB. Yeah, yeah, we, we really had a, a thing going on there uh, early on. And, and we identified that it was, was kind of nice to travel as a pack and a group and support each other and, and find energy from each other and really support, you know, the fellow, your fellow countrymen as they were winning or losing. Um, and it, it split a hotel room four ways. Yeah, and you know, Help made the it budget. cheaper. <laughs> well, that's originally how it started. Yeah, yeah for sure. Because we were like, yeah. hey, man, like we we got to split the costs here. And it's then, before Airbnb, and you had to yeah. split, you know, quite expensive hotel rooms sometimes. Yeah, and then all of a sudden we're like, hey, if we just hire like a massive house and we all go in on it, then you know, we can not only have a really cool time and support each other, but we all get a place to sleep and. Uh, no, it was cool. It good, to, it good to see that movement. I mean, you know, um, we can't really claim that it was the beginning of it all, but definitely we, we kind of really thrust it in there and we started cheering people up the beach when they won and it definitely it caught on and it's, it's really evident today yeah. within all the nations. It's still here. Here we go. 5.33 backup score for Cole Hauschman. Sets the situation for Jackson Baker needing a 6.01 
to take the lead off of Cole. Jackson sitting with priority now. Yeah, we have gone a little bit longer with the heats today, Kaipo. That extra 10 minutes just to allow for that additional swell. Here goes Jackson. In between her here, delays his bottom turn. Carves off the top nicely. And he's just going to get that one turn, so not likely to get the number to turn the heat. Priority and the lead turn to Cole Hauschman. This heat control to Hauschman. He's still got a lot of time on the clock to play with this heat control as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, 24 minutes. It, uh, it kind of only feels like we're... It feels like we're halfway through, but we're really only just getting started yeah. in this one. It's uh, Jackson Baker. You can see here, it was a good looking way from the takeoff, wasn't it? I sort of felt like this one was going to pan out down the line, but just went a little slopey and all that foam on the face. Yeah, I love the uh, the opening bottom turn where he just reaches down and, and, and tickles a rail, gets really deep before the big first carve. I think he'll be little disappointed that he didn't get the second section on that one mm. yeah 3.5 for jackson baker obviously on a different board today from channel islands you can see the coloring on the board yeah kipes he's actually uh gone one inch longer up to a 511 he's on the ci pro model and uh, i think that's going to be a theme with today one or two inches longer just to draw out that turn even for the paddle and just getting into the waves, just having a, a bit more confidence coming off the bottom. Just along the board always feels so much more stable and predictable as you're just, you know, trying to take on a bigger section. Yeah, that CI Pro model, Rich, has a little bit more of a modern rocker, right, to it. It's, a mo it's basically your high-performance shortboard. Yeah, correct. And, you know, these guys just stretch it out ever so slightly so that there's really no feeling of difference when they go from one board to the next right. to the other that's what you want you want to feel that consistency and, and uh you know have those similar feelings there's a couple of backup boards i guess when you do have those really high rocker boards which the ci pro is having that extra inch or two is going to help with the paddle power as well which is going to come in handy today i think yeah yeah for sure and uh you mentioned cole hausman he's um he's been ri riding the uh the driver 3.0. I think he switched down to the sub driver yesterday when the conditions were a little bit smaller. But he has been on a 6.1, uh, uh, just over 19 and a half inches wide. He's a big fella. Yeah. 33 and a half liters. There's, there's his, his backup. Boards. Yeah. Here's the backup. Nice little rounded pintail again. Yeah, it's interesting at 6.3 that he rides still at two inches shorter than his height. So. Yeah, perhaps on a little bit longer today. Yeah. I didn't get, uh, didn't get confirmation, but I know that he has been on that 6-1 through the entire event. Roll in. Roll into this one. He's going to be, have to be patient. Wave stands up on the inside. He may just get one turn off, and Whoa. it's a big turn. Can he survive? And oh, my goodness. Even the big bloke like Cole Hauschman unable to cons uh, survive that convergence of water right there. That was an explosion behind him. Yeah, that kind of had shades of the end section at, at Margaret River, except coming the other way. Yeah. And uh, whew, a couple of semi-trailers running into one another. <laughs> Fully. Well, he did see something down the line, didn't he? Just a little sleepy at the start, and then the, the wave starts to hit this new swell. Jacks up, sees this section. Goes for the uh, big layback turn. Carves down the face for a little bit. Now tries to put all that weight on the tail just to ride out, but that wave just chased him down. He got detonated then. What it is showing us is that Cole's style of surfing today is to attack. He's not holding back. He's not nursing turns. He's in full attack mode. So that's showing to me that he's super comfortable right now, and he feels like this is his day given the big lefts in on the conditions. Yeah, yeah, for sure. When you when you kind of look at, at the field and... Uh, you know, suited, what are the conditions suited to each surfer? Um, you know, Cole Hausman would have been rubbing his hands together going, yeah. He, he has the ability to kind of make all these little bumps and ridges. He smooths them out just by way of his power and height. He's probably doing a little bit of a, a arithmetic on the run there as well. Realized, you know, those roll-ins, everyone knows a roll-in is so tempting, it's so hard to say no to the roll-in, but then realized he only had one section and he's got to beat better a 5-3-3 with that one section, so he's got to throw it all at it. Yeah. 
Well, let's go to our roving reporter, Stace on the beach. Thanks, Kypes, here with the Bonsoy Locals Report. Dill, you've had a splash out there this morning. How'd you go? Yeah, it was a bit of fun. It's, it's not often you get to surf north here with no one out, even though it's a little bit rogue and wild out there. It was pretty sick. It was just me and Morgs kind of trading off. He, he was banging a few. I was doing donuts, but... Oh, come on, Jacko. Oh, Jackson big Baker. belt. He's going to do well to get up there, though. Uh, <laughs> tell me, Dill, what, uh, what does Jacko do from this point on? With sets approaching on the horizon, it's every bit of 10 feet closeouts down the bank here. Well, what's his best option to get back out? If he can squeak through these, this next set that's about to land on his head, he might be fine after that. But if, if there was a couple more after that, you'd be, you'd be washing yourself around in the rip and getting, getting the alley right highway out the back. Alley right compared to Halley Eva, how, how do they stack up? Because there's a lot of water moving out there right now. It felt similar this morning. You didn't even need to paddle out the back. You just sit on your board and let it wash you out to sea. The hard bit's not getting sucked to New Zealand when you get past the break. <laughs> <laughs> We're glad to have you here back on dry sand, mate. Thanks for your time and uh, best of luck to you on the Aussie camp today. Rich, can you expand on the, um, the dynamics of Alley Rights and how, where it's located? Yeah, well, it's... We're talking about the, the river mouth of the, the lake here at Narrabeen, which sits right behind the break here. Uh, and the entrance to the lake is but right up against the, the northern part of this beach. So where that, where that entrance is, uh, all that lake water, it comes right out and it creates this, this channel uh, that runs along the, uh, the, the shelf there. Uh, and then the alley right is the right-hander, uh, which breaks into that channel. And you can see here, there's the, there's the river mouth there. There's a bit of whitewash at the front of the, at the mouth of the river, or the mouth of the lake, I should say. Uh, and then this alley right section kind of breaks down into that channel, and then the lefts kind of break down the beach off it. But in a north swell, we get such a long left-hander that breaks all the way down the beach. Uh, and that's why we've got these lefts that are standing up and they're quite short and punchy, because we've got a, uh, a swell direction that's not typically great here, but has been definitely providing uh, super contestable uh, conditions. So, the unfortunately, the alley rides, it's really just, as you said, Richard, an escalator ride out this morning. We did see a few waves breaking into it, but just too churned up by that rip. Yeah, it gets to a point where the swell is just too big for alley rides yeah. and it starts closing out from the point right across to the, uh, to the tip of the sand. It does help with the paddle outs, as you can see that oh, rip absolutely. line right there. Yeah, so well, that... look, at, look at where that, where that kind of churned up, you know, turbulent water has just been just been funneled all the way through that channel and way out the back there. Enjoying this view from the Field New Sydney flight cam and I think it's about time to take a Bonsoy brew break. First of the morning, we'll be back with the conclusion. Semi-final number one after this. The GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy is brought to you by GWM, official automotive partner of the WSL Australia. By Destination New South Wales, official strategic sponsor of the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy. By Harvey Norman, 
official lifestyle destination of the WSL Australia. And by Oakberry. Fuel yourself with the official SAE of the WSL Australia. Welcome back to Finals Day here at the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy. Cole Hauschman and Jackson Baker out in the water in this first semi-final. Cole Hauschman with the advantage over Baker at the moment. Jackson Baker holding priority and needing a 6.01 to turn the heat. And here we have our two surfers. No waves ridden during the break, so the situation remains the same here with 14 minutes and 40 seconds on the countdown, Rich. Yeah, it's uh, you got to be patient, and I know um, you know for the spectators watching at home, it's not just you know rapid fire action here, but uh, you know this is the game. This is what these guys have to do. They really do need to to find those good waves. Sure, they could be riding a, a bunch of waves and, and doing a lot of reps, but you know quality is really what they're after. And it looks like uh, maybe a potential ride coming up here. It looks like there was a nice peak approaching. Bakerson with priority priority he will have an option of a couple waves coming through here first one just a straight hander there not much opportunity there we'll see what happens with the rest of the set as we see Marco Mignot and his support crew getting ready and right beside him is Jacob Wilcox so that's going to be semi-final number two Mignot versus Wilcox Jay Bottle Thompson Nathan Noodles Webster down there helping out the the Aussie crew this morning. It's been their uh, little campsite over the last few days. And the French guys not too far away, possibly just uh, trying to eavesdrop on some of the <laughs> <laughs> some of the tips the local crew have been uh, handing over. Yeah, it's almost gotten to the level where it's like uh, if you watch the professional soccer, they actually put the hand over the mouth when yeah. they're talking on the screen so that the lip reading doesn't go on. Well, they're speaking in French. Alain Rio, his coach, and Marco Mignot. So those guys probably can't understand. Uh, the strategy that's going on right now. But Alain has been a, a, a huge support for the French contingency, Rich. Yeah, yeah, he certainly has. And, uh, you know, he's had some incredible performances over the years uh, around the world and obviously at places like Tahiti, at Chopu as well. And, uh, you know, great to see Alain out here. Mad golf fan as well. <laughs> yeah, it seems to be a trend right now. Not, uh, it's kind of always been there. Huh? Yeah. A lot of surfers are golfing. More and more. Yeah, yeah. We used to, um, <laughs> we got pretty bad there for a while. We used to <laughs> travel with board bags and golf clubs and all sorts of stuff. But, I mean, you know, there is downtime when you're on tour. No yeah. doubt about it. You know, you can only surf for so many hours and train for so many hours. And it's actually a good distraction sometimes just to just to get away from it. Um, really, uh, it, it's a great sport that tests you. And, and like surfing, you know, conditions are, are never the same. One golf shot to another it's never the same like every wave's different one golf course to another surf break did you ever have yeah. a, like an unofficial contest where you had contest points and golf scores we did we did surf and turf a couple of years surf and turf here we go Cole Hauschman under the priority oh, can he ride out of that final turn the, oh, oh, wow, man. was that complete Rich uh, <laughs> I don't actually we'll know. take another look yeah. at it I mean it looks like he completed the actual maneuver but then got run it. down by the white water I, I think that little board tap was kind of yeah it was it was more positive than negative I feel like he thinks he made the turn and uh, he certainly looked like he he rode out of it but just that last little 10% where he was on his heels yeah, now we'll, look it we'll was, get a look at it here like great opening slash he tries to get there a little bit earlier this time so right there, he completes the maneuver. The thing is, I feel like now there's a new gray area, right? There's like, it used to be complete incomplete, but now there's points for something in between as well. This is a good uh, angle here, but this is that turn he did on the last wave that didn't work out. He went to it again. Well, at this point, he's kind of made the turn and then he just <laughs> kind of lays back <laughs> into it. <laughs> Matt Myers, the coach, is firing up the San Clemente squad saying he made it. I, I, I almost feel like the judges want to see you drop, jump off your board. Yeah. Like get to a point where you've made it and then you pin drop or yeah. you just bail out. It's kind of like, yep, I made it. Now I'm out of here. We saw a wave earlier on in the event when Matthias Hurdy did a fantastic rotation, landed it, got the completion, but then kind of dog paddled out. So. It was complete, and they gave him a good score, but you felt like if 
the completion was even more apparent, it would have gone higher again. Yeah. So I don't know it's always black and white. There's kind of a zone of scoring in between uh, there, I feel Judges like are just going to score the first turn on that wave, a 3.5 yep, for Cole it. Hauschman. So they did not think that final turn was made and rode out in control. So oh, okay. uh, situation didn't change. Yeah, I think that there was debate going on even between the, the Americans down there on the sand. They were kind of going, was it a make? And they were, they were hooting and hollering like it was yeah. just to kind of uh, sell it. Trying to sell it, but uh, yeah. Judges can't be fooled. Oh, great little, uh, well, Jackson. Jackson Baker on the comeback here. A couple of dynamic turns. Finds a little oh. bit more room. Oh. Simon Anderson layback to finish. That was a full Simon Anderson kind of. <laughs> Tribute move. Almost like a layback in the, on, the, on the backhand barrel. That was crazy. I don't know if he planned that tribute, but that was the first thing that came to mind when I saw the, that last section for Jackson Baker. Remember, a 6.01 gets him into the lead. Let's take a look at it here. Yeah, nice looking wave for Jackson. That first snap, really clean. And the second one tags it. I thought it was over here. But he comes around this section, gets a little <laughs> shampoo under the hood. Just kind of leans into it. But there's points on this wave for sure. Yeah, it's all about the airdrop out of the second turn. And that's where the points are. Will he get a few extras for the layback? I don't know. He disappears for a second. I like the style. Well, there was really not too much more he could have done. It would have been really hard to jump up on the roof and, and get that final hit. It's smart surfing. He wants to show control and complete the wave. Got too greedy on that one. It would have left kind of a little bit distaste, I feel, for the judges. So coming out of that thing and making sure he completed the wave is going to work in his favor. We're waiting for that number. Yeah, I feel like we have a lead change here. I think it's the number. I definitely think it's a six. It's just kind of how high they go on it. You mentioned Simon Anderson. Uh, everyone remembers Simon Anderson's 81 Bells win, but he won a couple of weeks after here at Narrabeen mm. as well. And then later in the year at Pipeline. So it was really the, the three victories on the thrust in 81 that had that symbolism. It was three on three. It's pretty convincing. <laughs> yeah, I actually caught up with Simon last night down at uh, the Newport. We had a little um, uh, a little chat with some of the, the Northern Beaches locals, courtesy of uh, our friends at Coopers. Nice. Yeah, it was really cool. And Simon was in fine form. Well, here we go. Jackson Baker is going to get his number. 6.67 Jackson. Oh, nearly a point Close spread to the there. top, yeah. Hey, we can see all the judges' scores right there and nearly a point spread. We throw out the high and the low, average out those other three. Jackson Baker is going to get the pleasant news to his ears that he is now in the lead over Cole Hauschman. Hauschman needs a flat six, a six-point ride. Cole Hauschman has seven minutes, 15 seconds, and has priority. I like that judging. I think it's uh, been spot on this morning. Um, I like the scale. They're still leaving a little bit of room just in case something crazy does happen. Yeah, and every day the scale is set because of the conditions and the waves on offer. Remember, the scale was quite high yesterday, and I think that was to kind of eliminate the chance of a lot of ties or really close matches in smaller waves. It was two foot yesterday. Today, you need to do something outstanding to get into that excellent range. Yeah, it's one of those days where you feel like something exceptional could happen, you know? It's, it's, just, it's out there. Let's see a 10-point ride today. I'd love to see it. Whoa, look at this set. Cole Hauschman seeking a corner here. And he's going to duck under. Well, both these guys are wearing that on the head, so that's going to uh, oh, oh, extract oh. a little energy. But look at the end on that one. Oh. Wow. Rolling all the way through the inside, and that's the section we've got to deal with as an end turn. What do you do now? I was trying to mind surf uh, that, but I didn't know what to do. I straightened it out. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because we've got this really south swell. Some occasionally one will bend back in, and that's when we're seeing those wash through sets. And now you can see the surfers paddling back in. It's that cat and mouse game that we talked about right at the start of the day today that looks like it's going to be in play throughout the entire day, flying over with the Field New Sydney flight cam. I'm curious to see if Cole Hausman, he's got plenty of time, but at the back of his mind, is he thinking, 
will I maybe have to try and get this done with one single manoeuvre? You know, if I get a wave that doesn't offer that second section, is that... I think that's what he's going to have to be prepared to do, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, obviously being pretty selective, both our surfers, Jackson, finding two good waves here. But uh, Cole Hashman, he has the, uh, the highest scoring single ride of the heat so far. And, uh, well, we might see uh, a ride up. It is Cole. There goes Cole in between wave. Racing down the line, needs to put it up into the lip, which he does right there. Big spray coming off the tail one more time. Now getting into rhythm, Cole Hausher with the final snap. Goes complete. He made that one. <laughs> And selling that to the beach. Needs a six-point ride. Oh, that had a beautiful taper on it. I got a little scared at the start. I yeah. thought, oh, I wasn't going to shut down. Very patient surfing, Rich. Yeah, good surfing here. Good wave choice. You can see Coles looking down the line and going, OK, let's get to this moment where the wave starts to slow up. Now he hits a beautiful hook. And the second one, a bit more of an acute snap. Throwing buckets and then does the layback hack. He's been going to that turn. Super reliable. And I love that one. Just sort of keeps the pro projection going down the line. Comes square off the bottom there. And again, just this super dependable hack that he's been going to. Doesn't overcook it. Coming to Jackson Baker, live action, kicking out. Didn't li like what he saw down the line. Well, Jackson's going to need a score. This is going to come in, and he's going to uh, he's going to take back the lead here, Cole Hashman. So what a, a great heat where we've seen the, the lead exchange hands back and forth. Yeah, we saw it happen uh, yesterday in yesterday morning teams. We saw multiple leaderboard changes, and hopefully that's the trend throughout the morning. Just listen to that roar of the ocean, too, in our, in our cans. Hey, it's... the judges ate it up, you guys. This could go excellent. One more judge to confirm that. Judge one, hurry up, because I'm feeling an excellent score. 8.33, it does go excellent for Cole Hauschman. Turns the heat, regains the lead. Now Jackson Baker needs a giant number, an 8.66. San Clemente whistling all over the beach, Rich. Yeah, you can hear the noise coming from uh... From the American crew, I love it. Yeah, we said the judges left that little bit of room in the scale and Cole just filled it in for them on that one. Well, I mean, really, he, he surfed that wave just so well as we check the Harvey Norman recap. Yeah, Cole Hauschman took an early advantage here, Luke. Yes, yeah, strong opening right. There's that layback slash that he loves to go to. It's almost become a patent turn for him. Jackson Baker took the lead with this one, Rich. Yeah, Jacko, some great surfing on the backhand. Two-turn combination, a big section there to contend with. And then he backed it up. His next score here, this one opened up for him, left him uh, a little bit more room. Gets around this one, got a little mini shampoo, but this one, this is the difference, Luke. Yeah, it gets, generates a lot of speed down the line. First turn a little more lateral. This one, he really just wrenches out of the lip, so much spray and then caps it off with a little layback jam to finish. That was an 8.33 and the lead to Cole Hauschman as we get back to live action here. One minute, 45 seconds on the countdown. Jackson Baker with priority, needing an excellent score of 8.66. Tons of surf available, but will a quality wave come through in these next 90 seconds, which yeah, is the question. That's what, well, at least Jackson has priority, so, um, he does have control of this next wave if, if and when it comes through. Looks like there's a couple of waves peeking up. Jackson having, having a, a little tentative look. I don't know if that was enough for him to lose priority and just start uh, mind surfing that through Kinda the inside. Kind of had a good bowl on it at this point in the heat. Did it have eight points on it, though? It's a big number that he's after. And, you know, that, that eight... 8.33 from Cole Hauschman. Why did it go that high? It was, um, it was, it ticked the boxes, man. It's speed, power, flow. There was a great rhythm to it. Every single one of the maneuvers was placed in the right part of the wave. They were done with intensity and, and, and some real intent, a lot of spray. Um, so, you know, He's really, really committed to his turns yeah. the whole heat. Well, and not to mention, Cole makes the final. Not only will he make his first Challenger Series final, He's going to get a wild card with this finish into 
Stop number six on the championship tour at that Sir French Pro presented by 805 Beer. Yeah, so after after Kay lost yesterday, that, yeah. that assured Jet Chili. Is that right? Yeah, Jet would be on the top right now. Yep. And then so Cole Hashman's going to we'll, get We'll it. take the second. We'll He's take that second wild card. Wow, that's awesome. That's a bonus right now for Cole Hashman. Oh, it's going to happen yeah. in under 10 seconds. Well, Jackson Baker, he's got uh, seconds here. It's not going to happen, unfortunately. So there you go. It is all decided. And those guys, 2% crew, they got a guy in the final. There's the numbers, 15.33 for Cole Hauschman. <laughs> and the San Clemente surfer is going to come to the beach and rest up because we're going to see him in the final. We're going to take a break. We'll be back with semi-final number two in the water at the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy. GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy is brought to you by BioGlan, official vitamin partner of the WSL Australia. By NRMA Parks and Resorts, official accommodation partner of the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy. By Bonsoy, official milk of the WSL Australia. And by Yeti, built for the wild. Semi-final number two out in the water here at the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy is Marco Migno, the 22-year-old out of Salulita, Mexico, representing France against Jacob Wilcox, a 25-year-old from Western Australia. We've already had a wave ridden. Jacob Wilcox with a quick start to this heat. Let's take a look what happened right at the beginning of the semi-final number two. We'll get back to that. 37 minutes and 15 seconds counting down here and waiting for a score for Jacob Wilcox for this ride, Rich. Yeah, so Jacob uh, seeing something down the line here. It's a bigger wave. Wow, just comes around that section and attacks it on the front side. And this is what we expected to see from uh, Jacob Wilcox. This is a replay, though, of, uh, of Cole Hausman. So Wilcox will begin with a mid-range score to come in. And we'll report on that score as soon as one more judge drops his number. Priority now to Marco Mignot. Wow. A six-point ride for one turn for Jacob Wilcox. Well, it was one turn, but it was an intense turn. You know, getting right up high on the lip. And uh, we've got so much intel on, on Jacob Wilcox and this style of surf. You know, this is... This could be West Oz that we're looking at right now, and he would just be feeling so comfortable and at home. I love how deep he takes off on the bank. He's way back and throws it right up in the top shelf of the wave. Just an indication of what you can get done with a single move on a big wave. I remember doing a trip with Jacob up to the northwest of WA, and you paddle out, and you're kind of like, where's Jacob? Like, the park's here. And then you look, he's like 50 yards deeper than everybody else. Yeah. We saw this guy coming. 
uh, from, a, from a teenage. Jacob Wilcox, 25 years old. He's been getting wild cards into championship tour events since 2013, where he had his start at Bells and also Portugal in the search event there. 2019, made the quarterfinals at, at Bells as a wild card, but he's had multiple choices of wild cards in 2013. 2014, 2015, 2017, 2019, 2021. Oh. We just saw him in Margaret River get a 17th just this year, Jacob Wilcox. Yeah, but I feel like the lights have just gone on for Jacob. He's had all these cameo roles on the CT, but suddenly, after two events on the Challenger Series, he's in a really commanding position. He made the point yesterday that last year, he lost in the first round of the first two Challenger Series events. Now he's already had a quarterfinal. He's in the semis with a good look at the final. He's going to walk away from Australia in a really, probably the best position he's ever been in. Yeah, just under that cut line for the Challenger Series in last year, finishing the year at number 13. We took the top 10. So um, just always right there, Jacob Wilcox. And then when we take a look at our fan poll, who did our fans think were going to win this heat? The online poll, 89% went with Jacob Wilcox. So. Clearly the favorite in this heat, but Marco Mignot could certainly be the spoiler. Wilcox again here, wave number two. Lofty snap, troubled water there, and that takes a hold of Jacob Wilcox on turn number two. You know, he didn't make that final turn, but you can just see how comfortable he is in these conditions. He just looks like he's so sure-footed on his board. And, uh, well, he's... Mate, this guy's made for the CT, and he's obviously had those reps already, and I feel like once he gets there, he's going to settle in really quickly. Uh, obviously working with DHD, and they're looking good under his feet. I love the way he fades the bottom turn. Classic off the top. Just gets a little bit hung up the second time, but looking like he's really in great form. Mm, he's been on the, uh, the DNA model throughout these last few events and uh, I think today perhaps switching to that 3DV model, the round tail. As we see our Sydney flight cam and a view of Jake paddling back out, 4.17 for that second effort. All of that was just for a single turn at the beginning. Marco Mignot with priority has yet to stand up on a wave. Mignot's been very quick in the smaller surf, in the lead up to today. So we're gonna see how Marco performs in a little bit of the bigger surf. Here he goes, fading a bottom turn. Easy top turn there, double up on the inside here, attacks the lip, but gets hung up, goes incomplete. Yeah, well, he certainly looked at home yesterday in those in those early morning heats um, when the conditions were, were clean and, you know, maybe shoulder height. He looked uh, right at home, very fast, really quick off, off the mark, did some amazing turns. And uh, to be honest, you know, while we have so much intel on Jacob, that there's really not a lot of info that I know about anyway of, of this kid uh, in these style of ways. But, uh, you know, picking a, a smaller inside here, tries to line up this second turn. Just perhaps uh, on the slightly bigger board, yeah. just getting caught up. Mignot's an interesting story. Globetrotting family, Dad Christophe, Mom Marina, raised their kids trotting around the globe as a surf family, both mom and dad surf. Uh, he has both a French passport as well as a Canadian passport. He's got a ripping brother, goofy foot brother, Nome, a longboard sister uh, who's a professional longboarder, Lola, and then another little brother. Uh, but just a really, really interesting family representing France, but you know, living in a beautiful town in Sayulita, Mexico. Yeah, the interesting thing about these two is though, although we don't have a lot of intel on Mark on these kind of waves, he has been in the spotlight since he was about 13 or 14. Yeah, yeah. He's been so like, for a long time. So like Jacob, they're both kind of, you know, prodigies, wonder kinds is another word that comes to mind. But uh, all kind of gets washed away now. If you want to make a career as a competitive professional surfer, it's about getting onto that championship tour. Wilcox on wave number three, winding up off the bottom, chopping it off the top, throws the fins, but gets caught up. <laughs> He's going for it, isn't he? Big turns. It looks like uh, it's the order of the day. This is a good looking wave. Marco, patient here, has to ease through a cut back into the white water as the wave stands up on the inside bank. Mignot squares off the bottom, hooks off the top, little foam on the face to deal with. 
One more turn. Wade gets super tapered there before he kicks out. Yeah, just starting to build. That was a better ride. Got to the completion on that one. Just going through the motions there. Some good solid surfing. See, so just trying to get through this uh, whitewash paddle out. As you watch the replay here, just a nice cruisy cutback, staying with the with the power until it stands up. Now the uh, section starts to bowl up in front of him. Gets a good clean snap, bit more vertical. One little final hit there, and then Jacob just uh, puts on the brakes, goes for the fade, and now he starts to work into that speed. Connects with the lip, but gets thrown off. Yeah, Jacob's obviously in a, in a good position. My only concern would be with Jacob is that he knows these conditions play into his hands. It's made for him that he doesn't go for too much when he doesn't need to. Yeah, Maybe he needs just, a slight... Yeah. yeah, just settle down a little bit, huh? Just ease back into it. Just go back into your heat strategy. Pick the right wave. There's a big win in the semifinal number one for Cole Hauschman. Got a couple things done. Let's hear from Cole. He's with Stace. Cole getting us underway here this morning. Firstly, what do you make of the conditions? Um, yeah, it's, there's swell, so that's good, and, uh, but it is a lot of work, but I was, I was here at 7 a.m. ready to go, you know, as soon as we saw the swell, it wasn't as big as we thought, and, yeah, I'm stoked they called it on, and, yeah, just trying to make the most of it. Scoring excellently when the conditions were waist high, and excellently today with the conditions double overhead, you must feel pretty good going into this final. Yeah, I feel like, uh, these are the conditions I kind of wish for, you know, um, and, yeah, I'm stoked, whatever, uh, whatever we had to offer. So just uh, stoked that they got the comp going today. It was a good call to call it off yesterday. And yeah, just one hit at a time. Absolutely. Jacob versus Marco in this final out here. Do you profile those competitors or just go in and uh, do what you do? Um, yeah, whoever it is, they're going to put up big numbers, I'm guessing. And they both rip. So whoever's in the final with me, it's best of luck. And hopefully we get some waves. Surf Ranch not on your mind? Yeah, I guess so. It's, I guess they're going off the rankings, so I'm not sure where that puts me, but if I did get it, I'd be stoked. I'll, I'll be going home. <laughs> You're in. I'm in. No way. All right, sick. <laughs> I guess I'm not going to Indo. <laughs> no more Indo. Do both. Yeah, I'm, I'm psyched now. That's news to me, so, yeah, I'm stoked. Good on you, Cole. You deserve it. We'll see you soon. Thank you. I'm in, huh? Sick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, you are. You always, you know? It's, it, it's one thing of being on the beach when anyone that like, gets a wild card or you qualify, it's almost like you're giving that surfer a gift, if, especially when they don't know. Oh, <laughs> you know? Handing, <laughs> man, you're handing them a ticket to the chopper factory. What are you talking about? <laughs> you, and it's funny, huh? is, there, is there even a, a second where you're going to think, oh, no, I think I'll just pass that up and go to Indo? Yeah. No way, man. I don't think so. Uh, is there a second when you go, oh, wow, now I've got something else on my mind while, while I'm surfing that final? Yeah. Look, he's got two more waves. That's yeah. all he's got to do. Two more waves, break down. It's really, really simple math at this point for Cole Hauschman, who he will face up against, still unknown. Jacob Wilcox with the lead and priority over Marco Mignot. Marco needing that 6.67 to take the lead off of Jacob Wilcox. But Wilcox has come off a couple times in his attempt. His surfing, though, looks like he's just gas. He's pedaled to the metal right now. So if he goes complete, Rich, I think a big number is going to fall. Yeah, at this point, I still feel like Marco, he's going to need two waves. Uh, so he's really starting his heat right now at the 27 minute mark. Whereas Jacob, he's already had uh, one decent score on the board, that six point ride. He'll get rid of the four, no doubt about that. And uh, I, I kind of like that he's just starting to sit and be a little bit more, a little bit more selective. I think he's obviously thinking in the back of his mind, if I can put another good number here, it's really going to put some pressure on, on Marco. It looks like he's actually going to have a crack at this one. Here he goes. Good looking wave here. Comes around this corner, has to hit the white water there. Fades the bottom turn. Nice arcing cutback. Oh. And again, section gets him a little missed time to there. Was on his way to excellent. But you could see there was a different pace to the way he surfed that wave. He settled into it just a little bit more, took it back a gear, and the rhythm was looking really good. Just comboing up those turns. Unfortunately, that, uh, that final section just squared out so 
crazy. He couldn't, uh, he did everything right, but just the intensity of that final section just blew him off. Yeah, again, he's really deep on the bank. That's a perfect little bit of crumble. That's exactly what he wanted. Fades again. Nice open face slash. Tries to get there early and then just gets pressed by the lip. I don't know if there was anything more he could have done on that end section. Had to go for it. A yeah, beautiful foam climb there. How's that little check fade to get onto that second turn and then that transition between the second and third was done so well. Kept all that speed. He knew he was running out of time. Threw it up on the lip and then, yeah, just... Hindsight just slapped you. You know, hindsight's always 20-20. You can always look back at the rear view mirror. Uh, that fade may have cost him on that one. If he just kind of scooted down the line, he would have got to that end section a little quicker. But yep. just that fade for me, though, Rich, surfers do that when they're confident. Yeah, that's so true. When you're kind of feeling it, those little those little motions, those little adjustments, they, they almost happen just without even thinking. It's all just automatic. It's part of the rhythm of how you're surfing these waves. Well, he's basically saying, I want to be deeper. I want to be steeper. I want to be more critical. I want to, that's what other surfers may be chasing that wave down the line. Yeah. That's a good point. Score comes in. He did improve his score line, Jacob, with a five-point ride. So he's got a flat six and a flat five. Here comes Marco Mignot. Eases off the bottom, eases off the top there. Uh, and this wave looking a little disgruntled final turn though gets to it nice and early and goes complete now with this direction change is he going to beach it and do a run around uh, he's definitely making his way uh, back to the to the alley right escalator and it's going to drag him straight back out the back so you'll see he'll just keep moving towards the left of your screen and then Straight is he in the, the right lift. place there? He's got to keep coming in a little bit more. Right? Than, yeah, he's going a little bit early here, so he might find himself in a bit of trouble. You see what's happening right here. I feel that he didn't get far enough over to really get into that alley. We'll get back to him after we watched Jacob Wilcox off the top there. Big turn. Comes around this section. Hacks that finish and oh. cannot, cannot ride out of that. Wow. That was just pedal to the metal, full tilt, championship tour style surfing. That in was. In my mind. You know, this is where this kid is going to end up. And uh, you can see what there is. A, there's a clear difference, you know, and, I, and with no disrespect, there's a clear difference to the way Jacob is attacking these waves compared to how Marco is. And we'll just look at this thing bowl out. Jacob off the bottom here, just connects with the lip. Keeps control down the line, gets in early to this big left hand, this big layback hook, and just could not unrun, outrun that avalanche of whitewash behind him. This was Marco. You can see he's kind of dragging the turns around. There's a different pace to it. But this is a better turn here. Connects with this one nice and early. He gets to outrun it. But it's uh, more of a defensive style of surfing versus a, uh, a real attack mode. Yeah, the big thing for me with Jacob is where he's doing the turns. It's right up in the top of the wave, but we're not talking about, you know, a three-foot wave. We're talking about a chunky, solid six- or seven-foot wave, and he's right up there in the top shelf. Here's a struggle right now for Marco to get out. He may just be getting into that alley section and getting a little bit of clear water on his way back out. It's funny. You can, you can just struggle on that inside section for so long but once you once you hit all that running water coming out of the lake there it just takes you straight back out the back so quick well 6.6 .6 drops for jacob wilcox even without the finish so now marco bigno marco needs excellent he needs an 8.23 and marco does have priority at the moment well i just think if uh if jacob had actually ridden out of that we were going excellent. Yeah, way excellent. Well, it's 6.6 .6 for one turn, so yeah, you can't double it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But uh, great signs here from uh, from Jacob Wilcox and a uh, little bit of work to do for Marco Mignot. Yeah, it feels like Jacob's almost in free surf mode right yeah. now. He's actually, he's got his competitive side and then it, it's just the excited surfer in him that just loves conditions like this and just wants to go off, go out Take, up, take off deep and hit the lip. Let's check in with Stace on the beach. Thanks, Kipes. Here with runner-up 
in the semi-finals, Jackson Baker. Jackson, you said you wanted to give everyone a head start on the Goldie, and uh, you certainly uh, lived up to it here, mate. A great result in the bank. <laughs> yeah, shocker up on the Goldie. Definitely hard to adjust after falling off the tour. I mean, yeah, I mean, I've seen everyone do it last year, and everyone seemed to turn it around, but that first event's definitely really tricky. So to come down here to Nara, I don't even have the best preparation coming here. I was still hanging at home the morning when they put our round on standby, but, I mean, I just kind of get down here, back myself. I, yeah, come away with a third. If someone said that to me before I came here, I'd get a third, I'd be pretty stoked. So went down swinging in that one. It was a bit of a bummer. that There's not many opportunities out there. Cole just got the two better ones. I felt like my surfing was there and some big turns and, yeah, went his way and it probably did. Yeah, like that eight was a great wave. It just, he had priority and that's why the cookie crumbles on to the next one. How do you switch over? Obviously, yesterday, looking at probably riding an epoxy yesterday, scrambling to find a step up. Yeah, I didn't even have a step up. Like I said, great preparation. Um, no, nah, I had a, just a 5.11 uh, of what I've been riding. I've got two 5.10s there and then a 5.11. So just jumped on the 5.11. And, yeah, I don't even think you need a big board out there. It's not that big. The conditions are definitely got a lot of ocean, like a lot of water in them, but the waves aren't that big. So that board held in really well and actually had a little crease in and got a fix. And she still goes a bit worried on that first time when I hit a late. I was like, ooh, could we coming in here? But, no, nah, held in tight and felt nice. And, yeah, like I said, get third, second event of the year chipping into the rest and yeah hopefully not be here for too long and back on the tour where i feel like i belong we can't wait thanks jackson yeah jackson baker equal third that's 6085 points that he's going to put in in his uh rankings bank leaving australia preparing for the next stop over at the Bolito pro presented by o'neill yeah that's a keeper that's a good one and uh kind of heartbreaking for those surfers that are leaving australia you know two events down and not nothing really yeah, you're, in the bank. Yeah, you your know? two throwaways already leaving Australia has got to be pretty disheartening. Pressure's on. You, you can't afford to throw away anymore. But, um, you know, this is a, a great great result for Jackson in his quest to get back on the tour. Casual but confident, he sounded. Oh, Marco with that Whoa. paddle just lost priority. Priority air to Marco Mignot. Priority now shifts to Jacob Wilcox, who's got heat controlled. He's got priority, he's got the lead, and he's got a big lead right now on the surfer representing France, Marco Mignot. So let's see how Jacob uses this priority. He's gonna let Marco take this one under. Smaller wave, Marco going right. Gets into clean water here. And a little sticky cutback for Marco. And it's very deep at that point. So we'll see what the number comes in for that effort for Marco Mignot. Yeah, just trying his luck on the on the alley rides. That one held up. Jacob, insider. Insider steepens up here for Wilcox. Snaps it off the top there. Long bottom turn, some foam to contend with. Cuts a little short there. Beats the oncoming section, wants to ride out of this one to prove to the judges he's complete. Still fighting in the white water. Paddle, 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 Jake. Hey. <laughs> Isabella Nichols just watching on, getting ready for her final against Sally Fitzgibbons. And well, talking about Pat the Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> that was a whole lot of love. Here well, we go. He's had so many ways where he actually hasn't completed that, that final turn. The surfing's been there, it's been incredible. Tags that first one, comes around a frothy little section here. Did well to even hang in on the bottom turn. You can see how much he wants to finish though, Rich. He hasn't had to finish on that second turn for some time. At this stage, I feel like it's even a, a confidence thing, a psychological thing to know that I can get the second move. Yeah. Are they gonna pay it? I don't know, again. Yeah, it feels a pretty similar number to me to his to his other ones. I, it's, you know, it's definitely not excellent. Well, guys, let's take a Bonsoi brew break right now for in this semi-final. Sally Fitzgibbons, she's getting ready for the women's final. Will she be faced off against Isabella Nichols?
GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy is brought to you by Bailey Ladders, official ladder partner of the World Surf League Australia. By Boost Mobile, official telecommunication partner of the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy. By Bond University, not for profit and not to conform. Bond University exists for you. By Cooper's Brewery, the official beer of the World Surf League Australia and by Northern Beaches Council, major partner of the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy. Semi-final number two, out in the water. Jacob Wilcox out in the lead. Judges owe us one more number for Wilcox. We went to break waiting for that last score for Jacob. We're still waiting for that number to come through to set the situation. 14 minutes and 10 seconds on the countdown. I'm Kaipo along with Richie and Luke talking you through the action. And it's been an action-packed morning so far, Richie. Yeah, it's been great, actually. Uh, good call by the event organizers to uh, hit the switch and press go. Because the waves have, uh, it's been fun. It's been challenging. It's been kind of big and unruly. But there's been some incredible surfing in the last, in these uh, opening two heats. Yeah, it's definitely favored the big, heavy-hitting, goofy footers. But Luke, to get here, when we look at the entire framework of this event, you had to be a versatile surfer. You had to make it through barreling, dredging car park rights. You had to make it through a pretty grovelly day yesterday. Yeah, that's right. And uh, I mean, yesterday, Marco Mayong really thrived, actually did really well under priority. Looked good also in, earlier in the heat in the sort of sucky hollow car park rights. Uh, Jacob Wilcox has had to surf his backhand. Most surfers came to Narrabeen expecting to surf waves a little bit more like this, maybe with a bit more of an east swell. But uh, yeah, it's been a really testing event, a really dynamic event, and we've kind of seen three different waves come into play. The hollow car park rights, the classic Narrabeen lefts, and the alley rights. There's the numbers for last of Jacob Wilcox, which we were waiting for. So Wilcox did improve his standing now with a 6.6 .6 and a 6.53. That means Marco Mignot, with priority needs excellent, way up in excellent range, and 8.76 if he wants to do it just in one wave, Rich. Yeah, I still feel like in his mind, he'll be going, I'm, I'm going to do this in two. Um, but I also get the feeling that Jacob, he's just, you know, just knocking on the door of an excellent score. If, if he gets that canvas, he's just going to uh, go to town on it. Yeah, you feel like looking at those scores of Jacob's relative to the serving he's been doing, they're actually quite low. Yeah. Yeah, I was just thinking the same thing. It's not really indicative of, of the performance that he's laid down in this heat so far. It's been quite dominating uh, over Marco at this point, but we want to see the Frenchman get into this. He looks like he might be having a little look at this one. No, it'll be Jacob. He's going to let Jacob go. Here we go with Wilcox. High line to start, getting to the bottom here. Crashes the lip, and the lip crashes right back. He can't help himself. <laughs> <laughs> he sees it and he just wants to attack. I feel like maybe he hits the eject button here at the last second and thinks the discretion is perhaps the better part of Valor and just thinks, yep, I'll save the knees. Maybe I'm looking good for the final. I'm actually surprised he didn't bail out there when he faced <laughs> that wave just battling out. I know I would have. <laughs> yeah, races down the line, really attacks the lip, and then right here says, ooh, maybe I'm going to get out. Yeah, you can see here this section had uh, no business, <laughs> no business being played with. Jacob just, you know, getting swatted off the lip there. And yeah, you're right, he kind of went, okay, I'm, this is not even a consideration. I'm not even gonna try and make this. Hit the eject button. You know, he's got to... Uh, the signs are good, though. The signs are good. He just needs to be a little bit selective bit more selective in terms of wave choice. I know he was under priority there. But, uh, you know, this is uh, this is sapping energy too, though. You know, if he's uh, thinking ahead to the final, I know it's only one more heat. If he does progress through this, that he has to go. But, you know, it's... Um, I mean, you've made finals go. before, Richard. What point do you start to... Does the brain start to tick over? You're trying to stay in the moment. You've, you know, you've got to finish the job here. But you can't help but think, you know. Yeah, I've got to you, preserve a bit of energy. What, it's natural. You automatically start going, oh, hi, I'm in the lead here. I could, And you, you've got to stop your mind going to the final already. Have to. You just go, mate, I've got 40, no, 10 minutes now. 
just slows this one out. Speaking of the final, we had just a vision of the ladies, the women preparing for their final, Sally Fitzgibbons and Isabella Nichols. So for those two, the equation's really simple today, Rich. It's two waves to the win. That's it. This is uh, no more heats after this one. A great result, you know, nonetheless, first or second. But you just know that both of these, uh, both these women have got a little point to prove here. Both uh, falling off the championship tour. And again, you know, Isabella and Sally were pegged highly from, from everyone to, to find their positions back on the tour. And uh, our ladies here just mind surfing, just getting in the zone here. Not sure whether they actually ventured out into the lineup this morning to really get a grasp on the conditions. Yeah, Isabella's been doing, we saw some work with uh, Matty Granger one of the icons of the northern beaches. Loves his big waves. Very enthusiastic. And uh, Isabella has been surfing, free surfing, doing everything with Maddie, just to kind of shift things up a little bit, get out of her head and get back to surfing for the right reasons. Yeah. And when we talk about, you know, actually Sally Fitzgibbons, if she's able to win this heat, Rich, we'll have a tie on top of the rankings between in India Robinson and Sally Fitzgibbons. India winning that first event on the Gold Coast. Uh -huh. Got a third here. Yep. Sally getting a third, a semi-final finish on the Gold Coast. She takes the win here. I don't even need a calculator to, to know that they're <laughs> yeah. going to be tied. Yeah, which is, you know, it's really cool to, to see um, Sally on back on top or potentially back on top. But Isabella's, you know, this is a huge step back in the right direction. You know, it was no secret that she took that... Um, uh, that, you know, falling off tour, she took that really heavily. She's been honest about it, yeah. Weighed heavy on her mind. She, you know, went to a, you know, sort of some dark places in it mentally. And she's been doing the work to try and get back there. And as you said, you know, just trying to surround herself with people that are really positive, uh, getting some distractions away from the ocean, away from surfing, just going, getting involved and, and, and doing different things. And uh, it's definitely paid off in this event. There's Matt Granger there. Yep. Isabella, you know, with a ninth place over there at the Boost Mobile Pro uh, Gold Coast. So for, for, the, for the women, a ninth, that's not a keeper result. No. You know, you're borderline on, on the men's side because we only take five women as opposed to ten men. So for the women, that ninth place is, is basically going to be kind of a throwaway for Isabella. But this, it's this a is a keeper. Yeah, Sally, on the other hand, she's just had... Such good vibes, you know, even just coming back on the Challenger series, she was like, yeah, let's do this. You know, this is going to be unreal. And, and she's a hard worker. And she's such a hard worker. She's had just grommets around her every time she comes in from the beach. And there's just so much positive energy around her at the moment. I, I mean, more than any other competitor, she surfs heaps. Then she comes to the beach at both of these events and gets involved in different partnership activations and gives back to the surf fans. It's so impressive, Luke. Yeah, I feel like Sally's sort of in the wetsuit for half the day. <laughs> she surfs her head, then she signs autographs, then she does an outfit change, and then she's back on the beach representing the sponsors, signing more autographs. And then I think she sort of taps the day off with like a 5K jog or something. <laughs> Just irrepressible. All right, our attention back to this men's semi-final two. Who's going to meet Cole Hauschman in the final? Is it going to be an all goofy foot matchup? Jacob Wilcox right now with the advantage over Marco Mignot. Mignot does have that priority, but has been sitting on it for a long time, Rich. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a little wait here for our competitors. There hasn't been too many quality sets come through. So uh, let's hope in this last six minutes that the ocean does start to tidy up a bit. Let's check in with Stace. Uh, I think he's got some intel for us. Yeah, thanks, Kypes. Just did a bit of a survey of all the quivers down here on the beach. Oh, every surfer coming up today, coming down with at least three or four boards, bringing down everything uh, in the car. The gentlemen, they've uh, all opted to go out today on boards that are either half an inch or an inch bigger. Uh, the women in the final have both gone up two inches. Sally Fitzgibbons would typically ride a 5'8". She's just paddled out on a 5'10". Glenn Pang, which looks unbelievable under the arm. And uh, Isabella Nichols the same. Usually a 5'9", DNA from DHD, and she's jumped out on a 5'11". So not so much for the wave faces that they're looking to surf on. It's more just that power of the ocean and trying to get into those waves nice and early. Oh, thank you for the reporting, Stace. So there you go. Yeah, it is. You know, you got a lot of current to deal with. Um, just paddling into them. 
And uh, sounds like we are set for an outstanding women's final. Jacob Wilcox is going to have to straighten out. Marco Mignot going to take this wave. He baited them into it. And... I, want... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love seeing this. This is almost exciting as watching them ride waves. It's just a priority hustle. Oh. And for sure, that no was doubt. just a, a great salesman's move there. That was CT. That was CT Heat IQ right there yeah. by Jacob Wilcox. And he got him. Check this out. So Jacob, a little further out, he, he's going, I want this wave. And Marco's going, well, if he wants it, it must be good. So I'm going to take it. But have a look at it. Just closed out down the line. It was absolute rubbish. So a great move there from Jacob Wilcox. And he's going to make life just a little bit harder here in this oh, last yeah. four minutes. Wrestling back priority. He has the lead. That's so. right. We're, we're under the NRMA five-minute warning, Rich, and uh, it's all Wilcox at this point. It's all Wilcox, but it's also come down to one wave now yeah. for Marco. Let's take a look at our Harvey Norman recap here, starting with Marco Mignot, Luke. Yeah, fades the bottom turn. As Rich pointed out, he's just dragging that turn a little bit. Gets a better end turn here. The wave face goes a little marbly. Finishes well. Crafted a little use of the direction change. <clears throat> Jacob, big, deep bottom turn, right up in the top shelf. You can hear the crowd reacting. Goes for it again here. Big slash. Doesn't quite ride out. Yeah, Jacob's just been, uh, pro you know, approaching these waves, these six to eight foot faces like they're two to three foot. He's, yeah. he's making the surfing look big. It's fast, it's impressive, and it's CT-like. And uh, kind of get the feeling in the next three minutes we're going to see this guy progress into the final. Here we come back, live action. Three minutes, ten seconds on the clock. It's Marco's definitely searching. not over. It's yeah. not over. Well, Marco needs fireworks, Rich. 8.76. Yeah, he's got to try and... Uh, well, he's got to try and find a way first and then convince Jacob to let him have it. And give up priority, which, you know, you come back to all those uh, reps that Jacob's had in the in the CT jersey. And, you know, he's been on the Challenger Series for a couple of years now. So plenty of man-on-man -man experience. Yeah, I think uh, Jacob, he's definitely closed the door. He hasn't locked it. He's dominated. But he would have liked to have just made it a little bit more certain, I think. Finish oh, yeah. one of those second moves. Yeah, well, this is, uh, there's space for him to tidy up a few things going into the final. Obviously, this is a great, uh, almost acts as a warm-up for the final. Our competitors know exactly what to expect now. It's going to be an exciting final with Jacob Wilcox and Cole Hausman. Yeah, if it, uh, if it does go that way, it will be uh, a real goofy foot challenge. But hang on a minute. Here goes the Frenchman. Marco could be the last swing for the French surfer. Eyeing up something big. Oh. You can see the hesitation in his line. Maybe looking for a ramp. Maybe looking for a big air. Goes down. And this is going to scrub a lot of time off the clock for Marco Mignot on the paddle back out, Rich. Yeah, he's going to need to get lucky and just get a little uh, little pathway straight back out to the, to the lineup. But you would have to think with a minute 30 on the clock, Jacob is just going to see this one out. Luke, I'd love to see Jacob catch another wave just for our... Yeah. Viewing pleasure. <laughs> oh, definitely. Like, it's been a, almost an expression session with Jacob Wilcox, and we've thoroughly enjoyed it. Feel a little sorry for Marco Mignon. Didn't really get a good look in on that wave. Realizing he needs an 8.76. One section presents itself, and I guess only a big rotation on a huge wave would have been required. Yeah, you're right, Kipes. He was in... Uh two minds whether it was a barrel or an air or a float he didn't really know how to approach that way but it, he's not even going to get out the back here nah. it's just another big set going to wash him down to the mouth of the lake there and uh it will be jacob wilcox who's moving through to the final big heavy hitting goofy foot matchup this it, is awesome uh, australia versus usa this is going to be a great men's final we got 30 seconds to make it official with Jacob Wilcox. There he is. Well, it's been a long road to the final for Wilcox, having to surf a bunch of different conditions. He's met every single one of those challenges, and now he's just two good waves away from being the champion here at the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy. 
Yeah, so Jacob will be uh, still climbing up the ratings here on the men's side. Good points. And, uh, well, it was a great display from Marco Mignot during the event. We saw some incredible surfing from him. There's the numbers. Jacob Wilcox will be meeting Cole Hauschman in the final. Let's take a look at our Bailey Ladders bracket for this event and the men. So our quarterfinals yesterday, we saw Jackson Baker. He's going to have an equal third along with Marco Mignot. But look at that final, Rich. Yeah, this is uh, an awesome matchup between Cole Hauschman and Jacob Wilcox, two really the form surfers of the entire event. And uh, congratulations to Jackson Baker and Marco Mignon making it all the way to the semifinals. But uh, man, that was a really stacked quarterfinal bracket. We saw so many amazing surfers. Yeah, that's right. Well, you ready for it? Buckle in, because after this break, we will have our women's final in the water. It's going to be Sally Fitzgibbons coming up against Isabella Nichols. There's no place like home and this place really does have a special feeling in my heart. You come to Sydney and no one's sleeping in here. Everyone's out and about doing amazing things, coastal walks, coffee. Everyone loves to be outdoors and just taking in the beautiful energy around us. And then over to throw some clay around, which is something I've wanted to do for a long time at Throw Clay Studios. Northern Beaches coastline is just beautiful. You've got each that make these beaches so different. Here we go, it's finals time at the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy. A beautiful day, big conditions, and two big names are going to fight it out for the win here at the second stop on the Challenger Series. Here on the Harvey Norman host set, Ronnie Blakey joined by Laura Enovar, Jess Grimwood. I'm so amped. This is uh, an epic battle. These two surfers didn't survive the cut. They, they rallied, they fought back, and here they are competing at this iconic location. Laura, let's have a look at the, the Bailey Ladders bracket. So cool. Sally Fitz and Isabella Nichols, let's go. What a final. And, you know, to see Sally obviously get that third place at Snapper and back it up here, she's going to be flying ahead on those rankings. Uh, Isabella, she needed this. She needed to get back into gear and she well and truly has these ladies have dealt with so many different conditions this week and today is throwing a whole nother ball at them oh yeah it's a huge ball but uh jess <laughs> looking at that quarterfinal bracket these competitors have had to overcome some really tough surfers to earn their place in the final and it's going to be sally on the first ride yeah look at this change of of attack, of course, with these big conditions. This is the replay of oh. Bella's first wave, too. I think she got the five, six, seven for that one turn, and you could hear the crowd loving Whoa. it, too. Yeah, this is huge. Of course, if Sally Fitzgibbons wins, with India Robinson getting a third place finish here at this second stop, they'll be tied at the top yep. end of the Challenger Series ranks. Isabella Nichols, you know, that those extra points for a victory will be so important to her. Uh, massive start to the Challenger Series for Sally, the way, but. 
Yeah, Isabella, a throw throwaway result up there on the Gold Coast. A, a win would be monster. Yeah, Sally in India. India obviously going out in the uh, semi-finals yesterday afternoon in some tricky conditions. I'm so glad to see us out here today. But uh, yeah, those two will be up there. Oh yeah. As we head over to Bolido, South Africa for the third stop of the Challenger Series. But Jess, mm. we said it at the start of the event and uh, I'm I, I can't believe how, how right we were, but we said it was going to take a, a performance in different conditions. I, I don't think I saw the conditions changing as much as they have over the past week. Yeah, and for, I mean, Isabella out there, she had to contest with the hardest that we've copped all week yesterday afternoon to push through against India. And now she's got, like, this is the spectacle of surfing, and you can imagine at your own break, as soon as it gets this big, the big guns are dusted off by the local guys and, and women and... And there's like victory rides out there. There's like literally <laughs> like true. huge stand-up barrels or, or complete close-out big boomers on the inside. Yeah, we saw Sally get mowed down on her first ride for just a, a, a throwaway, a, a one. Isabella Nichols, she had a, a 5.67 and really was just winding the windows up trying to finish that, that wave off. We've got a, a long final here uh, ahead of us. Plenty of time left for these competitors, but we've just uh, uncovered our second finalist in the men's division. He's with Stace. That's right. Thanks, Ron, here with Jacob Wilcox, who has uh, opted to stay on the sand after what was a pretty cracking semi-final. Getting eyes on the water for the final. Jacob, how are you feeling? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's definitely cracking. I got smashed a few times. Uh, I got pretty flexed on a few waves. Try not to do that as much in the final and just try to slow down a bit more and be a little bit more selective on the waves I'm catching. But, yeah, I felt like if I'd finished a few of my waves, we'd have got some good scores. felt like I was getting sixes for kind of one turn. But, yeah, just kind of relax and just pick my moments and pick some good waves. You did look like you forgot you were in a heat out there at one point. <laughs> yeah, I made some silly mistakes. Uh, just with my body, <laughs> just getting it flexed a few times. But um, it's all right, I'm in the final. Only got one more heat, I can flex it another few times and then I'm done for the day. Well, every athlete has different preparation pre heat. I see you're taking the nerves off down here with a bit of Hot Wheels action. Yeah, I actually found this on the beach this morning, eh? Don't know where it's been, might be a bit sus, so I'll let you have it. My like three and a half year old boy will love that. Thanks, Jacob. Ah, uh, good stuff. Yeah, Jacob Wilcox, uh, I, I think the impressive thing of, about his performance through this contest is he's looked as strong on those smaller days as he has in the big stuff. So uh, all that work and, and the move to the East Coast has, has paid off for him. Yeah, Jacob and Cole, you know, this will be the biggest uh, results of their career and they've both been standouts. Like you said, Jacob, a standout when it was small the other day and then, you know, into today, just looking so strong and, you know, just what it takes to adapt in these conditions. Like you mentioned before, we have seen absolutely everything. Honestly, when we see Big South World coming to Narrabeen, we usually pack up and, and held, head elsewhere for the week. But, uh, you know, these have been some amazing waves and the surfers have been really making the most of them. No, we I'm, finally got our left. It's true, yeah. But it's I, not I'm, like the regular left, but it's uh, it's still pretty epic. I'm at the northern end of the peninsula and driving down to North Narrabeen. Uh, you know, there wasn't a, a whole lot on offer. Big South Swirls are kind of tricky on the northern beaches. Kind of tends to, to light up the, the southern end of Sydney a, a little more. But yeah. this is a... You know, we're going to give the, the surfs a big challenge, obviously, but there is still some magic rides out there. And, you know, Cole Hausman, he really figured it out in that first semi-final. He, he looked on point. It's going to be an unbelievable final there. Really waiting for, for this one to kind of come to life. But that extra time on the clock will serve the competitors well. Yeah, that extra 10 minutes, 40-minute heats. And, you know, you've got that rip running around. So at least we've been able to see the athletes catch a wave, scoot around up into the alley, and they get to take that nice train out the back. But, uh, you know, just even this morning, these, these ladies have been down here bright and early. I'm sure they would have been down here in the dark. And, you know, just hearing that call, be pushed back an hour, back an hour, and staying composed and, uh, mm. you know, in the zone, but not, you know, using too much energy. It's, uh, it's, all, it's a lot to uh, lead up to a big, big final like this. Yeah, I, even, like, first light this morning, the waves weren't even this big. Like, oh, it, was it was literally about four foot, and it... And it just built and built every hour every time they made the call it just started getting yeah. bigger and bigger it was much smaller this morning but it was low tide so pretty straight mm. competitors just looking to get in position at the moment looks like something might be standing up here it is isabella nichols with the priority 
she doesn't take this one. Not a lot of face on it. Not a lot of wall to, to really lay into. When you, you think about these two competitors, Jess, who has the edge on the backhand? I'm going to say Sal at this point. I think Sal has the edge technically. Um, you could tell uh, from her takeoff and her approach and her stance, uh, I think she's more able to, or she has a higher completion rate out of the lip on her back end, I think. Um, and looking at Isabella's, she has got that big kind of hook, though, on her back end. She's got that really nice kind of almost a carve down, not quite a straight up in the lip snap, but almost like a carve down on her back end in conditions like this. But I will give the edge on the lefts um, to, Is, uh, to Sally, sorry, at this point. Yeah. I'd have to uh, agree with that. And, and Sally's comfort in, in bigger conditions is, is proven. At, not at the QS level, but at the CT level. You think about her back end at, and her 12 wins on the championship yeah. tour, the majority of them came on the back end. For sure. You know, she uh, lit, lit up in G land. I mean, um, sorry. Fiji. Cloud Fiji. Break, yeah. Cloud break. Uh, and then also Rottnest Island, that was left. And, uh, you know, she's, she's grown up surfing waves like this, uh, these big beachy. She's no stranger to all of the uh, challenges that beach break conditions can handle and she's she's not afraid to just get out there it, she would be out there like any day of the week if the waves are like this and and i think isabella we know that she's just got that deadly forehand and she's she's really oh, finessed look that at this. <laughs> what an entry here from sally fitzgibbons looking to get a score on the board to match it with isabella nichols this wave not as big so she's gonna have to really do some work here on the inside tricky one to read bit of foam on the face and Sal just chipping away on it. It's going to be really interesting, this number. For me, I, I think the credit's definitely going to go to the surfer who's attacking those bigger sets. And Isabella did let go of a, a pretty big turn on the 5-6-7. For sure. Look at this paddle in. Absolute commitment there by Sally Fitz. And yeah, this wave didn't really have the cupped out nice line to it, but she just worked her way through the foam. I think wanting to get something on the board, but nothing really too big just gets the finish here but she'll be looking for a nice clean wave so she can really connect with that lip and Missile. yeah on the outside isabella got in on this set as well yeah this is a better looking wave isabella let's see what she pulls off here nice slash in the pocket gets up there for a second and uh that was some more drama there for isabella a bigger nicer wave would mm. love to see her come off the bottom a bit harder but just wanting to get that completion there so i think with the 5-6-7, the judges will love that. Yeah, I, I think Sal's probably not going to turn in a, a great score for that ride. I mean, it was a, a small wave by today's standards. Isabella on a, a much bigger wave, but Jess, we, we know they're going to be rare, those waves that open up, and it didn't feel like Isabella got all the points she could have out of that ride. No, I think she was adjusting to that. When I look at the score, like four-point ride for me, what went down in that situation in the context of the final was, was Sally um, picking up a second ride for herself to put her back into that rotation in the takeoff zone um, and finding that seven, eight or nine. And for Bella's one, I feel like she went to that carve down. She's comfortable on that backhand carve down and, and she's feeling out that left. She hasn't surfed it like this throughout the whole week. It hasn't been this big and it hasn't been on this setup. So that was a, a good example of a, a check turn kind of carve down to a really early snap and not putting everything on the line. It's going to hold that. That could have been a, you know, eight plus ride potentially on that section. I agree with that for sure. I mean, you. In a final like this, Laura, you, you want to square up. You want to drop to the bottom and get up into the most critical part of the wave straight away. Yeah, for sure. And I think maybe looking back, seeing how this, this uh, really unfolds right now could be something that might haunt Isabella. But, you know, at the moment, five, six, seven, she will back that up. I feel like that still could go into that six-point range, possibly. Mm. So, you know, she's still going to have a nice edge on Sally heading into the back half of this heat. But... Equipment wise, did you uh, get the chance to chat to the competitors? Did anyone have to have a scramble and get a bigger board for today? Well, we didn't want to unravel them too much with, well, I didn't anyway, asking about dimensions straight off the bat, but it does look like they've got a few extra inches on those boards. Obviously, a couple more litres in volume, um, a little bit more foam under the feet because we saw the locals just taking out literally like eight, eight eights or things like that on um, yeah. short boards this morning just to get into some of these sets. So, a um, few more litres. Yeah. And you can see last score of Isabella, not actually a bad move. It puts Sally in, um, I mean, it's early on in the final, but 
Uh, it's just a strong indication of how she squares up on the comparison and scaling for judging. Yeah. Sal knew too that she was just wanting to get a, a score on the board under priority. But uh, Isabella on a bigger wave, even though she didn't let go of huge turns, still beat Sally on that exchange. 5.17. So the requirement now is a 6.84. Stace getting us word that both surfers are, have stepped up a couple of inches on, on their normal short boards. 25 minutes to go here. The World Surf League would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians, the Guyamigal and the Gadigal people of their country on which we gather today, saltwater people. We pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging and extend this acknowledgement to all First Nations people here today and joining us on the broadcast. Things are, are starting to uh, oh. settle in now on this epic finals day. A bluebird day, big condition. Sally Fitzgibbons chasing a 6.84 here. Opting to commit to the inside, but this wave, like her last ride, a lot of foam on the face, making it difficult to set a rail turn, and she's going to get mowed down again by the whitewater here. Not really uh, convincing at the moment. Isabella's kind of finding the cleaner face out there. Yeah, Isabella's wave selection has been absolutely on point. That wave just heading into a foamy sort of froth on the inside, but... Sally, I think maybe feeling out where the judges' scale is heading, and so I think she'll have a good idea after that four-point ride. But, yeah, the judges making it clear they want them on the nice, clean walls, like we've seen the men in the last few heats, and, and Isabella found that with the five, six, seven. Mm. And this is another thing that she's been doing throughout the whole contest, like her pathway to this final right now. Bella has been the best at adapting to the conditions on hand. Like we've been saying, it's been a, a range of everything. But here's the replay of Sally's last wave. The start of it looks so good, and then it kind of just fattens out. She doesn't collect that really first opening critical section, and straight away that puts this wave way down in the middle to low part of the scale for me. Mm. Um, she just has to kind of make up for that decision and, and close out the ride, and she's going to reset and find something else because it was a 267. Yeah, just when that, that white water uh, filled up, the face of that wave it felt like she should have just ditched it and yeah. got back out there for priority it was just you know we've we've spoken about it before on a smaller day when you you're surfing a, a wave with foam on the face that there's a challenge but on a big day where there's a lot of energy in the, the lineup it can be really hard to set that rail as we get to live action once again on the outside Nichols up with a good section standing oh, up here oh, and there oh. is a better belt <laughs> and that is going to be a, a decent score now with just under 23 minutes to go. Absolutely. Well, she has picked the gems in this heat so far, and I think she adjusted after that last 5.17 to, to think, yep, OK, I'm going to have to attack that end section. And she did just that on that wave. That was uh, really well served. Mm. How beautiful is this, too? I love even the setup carve. She kind of fades on the takeoff, times the bottom turn, sets up this section, and she sees it walling up. Here it is right here. Big hook into the lip, times it almost, I think, went to <laughs> have a little bit of celebration, but dials the emotions back in because she's still got 22 minutes to overtake Sally to, for the final. It was a, a much more settled ride. Mm. Stuck close to the bowl, faded on the takeoff, which allowed her to get that carve in tighter, which meant she wasn't so far away from the steeper part of the, the wave when she got to the end. She yeah. was uh, right there to hit it with a, a good backhand uh, snap and we're expecting that it's going to be the best number of the heat definitely i think uh you know i loved how calm and composed she looked on the takeoff and yeah just sort of she got into it right on that little rip bowl the edge mm. of it and just got to play with it at the start and uh there are the numbers for isabella nichols 8.17 have to say you know what uh, sally fitzgibbons has looked so composed on a road through to this final but this is the most unsettled i've seen her for sure. And this is the conditions that I would have thought that Sally would come to light the most. And I think maybe she felt like she had the edge out here, you know, just knowing how, how strong she is on her backhand. But her wave selection has let her down so far. And so she's going to have to adjust right now and, and really sit out there and wait for a, a bomb because if she gets one of those waves that Bella's been on and, and attacks the lip, she can do some pretty wild surfing. Yeah, you, you think about it. I mean, Isabella's surfing the, a full 40 minute heat here at the moment. Sally Fitzgibbons has 20 minutes to, to turn it around really. Her heat is just starting. Yeah, she'll be looking for what Bella's found already and now suddenly her backup score of a 5.67, although we thought it was kind of adjustment surfing and settling into this heat, looks really dangerous for Sally. 
because it, it puts her against the ropes. But I mean, it is Sally Fitzgibbons, <laughs> exactly. and it is literally the position that she loves being in most. I think in a, in a heat context, it's like back against the ropes, and she starts to just fire up. Southwell energy uh, on the Sunshine Coast is, you know, something that Isabella as a, a Grom didn't experience a whole lot. Sure. Sally's from a few hours <laughs> yeah. south of Sydney, so uh, she's worn the brunt of so many big South Swells. is really comfortable in bigger conditions, but uh, at this stage, it, she's she's out of rhythm. She's out of rhythm with the quality sets. The waves that she has taken haven't provided clean wall. She hasn't been able to use her strong backhand to get an advantage yeah. here. I feel like she's been playing it safe with that wave selection, maybe just trying to force force it on a couple. But, you know, as we've seen in the men's heat, heat the, uh, the judges, they don't want to go high unless you get one of those nice blue walls. And uh, Isabella's just looking looking so on, on right now. Isabella, 25 years of age, three, year, three years on the CT. Broke through for a victory last year to keep herself on the championship tour. And this year, well, if it wasn't for Molly Picklam, she'd probably be on the CT. Through the first four events, Molly bumped her out. Uh, she was on her way to a solid result at Bells, but fell out of the, the mix in the semis and, and had to pretty much re repeat her amazing performance at Margaret's last year to stay on tour, and she fell out of the mix early. So, you know, she quickly had to try and regather herself for that first stop on the Gold Coast and the whispers I was hearing was she, she wasn't feeling great about herself. Um, I don't think she was feeling too worthy uh, at the time and it, it was evident in her performance because her free surfing looked strong on the Gold Coast but once she put mm. the jersey on it kind of fell apart. Yeah and I mean something like that the cut coming back from that it's it just it's tough and this, the Snapper Rocks event happened really quickly after. They basically had a week to really compose themselves and, you know, I felt like for Bella that just didn't happen in time and, uh, yeah, the confidence wasn't there, but something's clicked here and she's uh, she feels really back and uh, ready to, to make the most of it and climb her way back. Well, after Bells and Margaret's, you know, there's so much uh, going into those events and I, even I can speak to it. It was a quick turnaround. Yeah. I was exhausted <laughs> when I got to the Gold Coast. It's a lot of talking. But uh, no, it's, it's a lot for the competitors, you know. They're, they're not just thinking about the mid-year cut at that fifth event. They're thinking of it from the very first event these days because getting on a roll early is the only way you're going to stay on, on tour throughout the, the back half of the season and into the following year. Yeah, it's an exhausting thought for them too. Just as, as athletes, if you're already thinking about not losing from the very first stop, that's really, really sucking and leeching some energy from your day-to-day -day performances. But I feel like for Bella, if she's already found herself in the range of an eight-point ride in the final, you know how tightly the panel holds on to those eight-plus rides in their back pocket. They're not going to uh, genuine. What is it? Generously. Yeah, there's no charity yeah, there. It's not, they're not just dishing them out because it's a final. They're holding them so tight because it does set the scene for the rest of the, the season, the performance of the Challenger Series. So uh, well and truly worthy up there in excellent rides and in the lead of the final running. Yeah, just over 17 minutes to go here. Some set waves really standing up on this outside section. Isabella's been leaning into some local knowledge and some local energy stays. One of the biggest frothers we've ever met in Isabella's camp here. Yeah, that's right, Ron Dog here with Matt Granger, one of the greatest surf mines in the world, but local to this area, and, and uh, he's been having a great time with Bella this week. Matt, what have you guys been up to? Um, after the cut, she was just, I mean, like everyone, they're devastated, so they've got to regroup. And I was basically just teaching her about being in the present, looking through the world like a kid again, like narrow beans, like it's the first time here kind of thing, seeing the waves for the first time, getting the love for surfing back and just the whole froth back. And that, that's what we've been doing, just working on it. Yeah. yeah, it's been working a treat. She mentioned it in one of her early interviews in the week. A unique situation this morning, Matt. No warm-up heats or anything. Straight out there to create a champion. How do, you, how do you get set for that? I can't say I've ever seen that happen before. Well, we actually had a sauna just at my house down the road, waiting for the call. We did a breathing session, and then we looked at the phones just as it finished and said it's on. And I'm like, hey, this is it. Let's just go do it. Two waves. So we are talking to Hedgy out, out the back here the other day. Bella and I, and he goes, hey, Bella, guess what? You only need 10 waves to win this. And she went, oh, that's pretty cool. So we've just been focused on that, keeping it super simple, going back to being a Grom again, dialing the boards in, dialing what waves to catch, and just being in position when they come, be in the present and just surf it. 
Working an absolute treat so far. I'll let you get back to it. Thanks for your time, Matt. Cheers. Thanks, Thank Ron. you, Stace. Oh, yeah, this, oh, this will be uh, exciting for Matty Granger, mm. but it uh, would also be missing not being uh, out there in the lineup on a big day like today. As we see Sally Fitzgibbons now using her priority. She's got a bit of nice, clean face to work with here. Oh, just misreads oh. that section. Had a big lump through it. And that one's not going to really help her out too much. She really wants to put up a, a big score comparable to Isabella Nichols's uh, opening ride. But that one is really not going to, uh, I think, help her, her chances, and she knows it. Yeah, frustration there. I think she knew, felt like she maybe tried to fit two turns into that end section, but it just meant that she cut off and didn't really get anything that connected the way she would have wanted to. But it looked like a nice wave when she took off. A bit of a chatter on the face there, but board hole didn't get that nice carve and then this was where I yeah oh. just that bit of wobble she knows it too doesn't she that little cross rib just yeah. just kind of threw her off like you said and she tried to do a little too much and, and recover and kind of miss that that pinnacle moment in that last section yeah 14 and a half minutes to go here waiting on the scores to come through for Sally Fitzgibbons we feeling that it's not really going to help her cause too much, but we'll see. We're going to take a Bonsoi brew break. Back with the final right after this. Northern Beaches Council, a major partner of the GWM Sydney Surf Pro, presented by Bonsoi. We've got the women's final out there at the moment, 12 minutes remaining. And Sally Fitzgibbons really has nothing decent to speak of. No great rides just yet. Isabella Nichols has a 5.67 and an excellent 8.17. She's out there with priority and really has one hand on the trophy at the moment. If she can get rid of this 8.67, life is going to become very difficult for Sally Fitzgibbons here, Laura. Yeah, it just feels like Bella has done everything right in this final. You know, starting with a big committed turn on the 5.67, backing it up and then, you know, kind of not going too hard on that second wave, just banking a score and then next wave unloading for the excellent score, the 8.17. And Sally just hasn't been able to click into gear and find anything and, and connect with the wave the way she wanted to. And really, a, a relationship uh, with Narrabeen throughout this contest and with the Northern Beaches uh, has, has always been so strong. She's chasing a, a second win at this uh, event and, uh, yeah, w winning it as a QS some years ago now, but, but still positive memories. Yeah, and you can feel it too. I think we were speaking about it earlier on in the competition, but when someone's so open and, and connected to a certain place, it's so... Um, evident how much they absorb the energy of the crowd and we was the oldest guy on the beach 
the youngest kid on the beach, they all seem to have Fitzgibbons jerseys on at some point during the contest. And it's, here she goes, actually, up and riding. So again, she finds a way with some oh. foam on the face, but there's an aggressive first turn. And she'll need to surf out of her skin here. Again, not as big a wave, but Sally has the backhand moves to turn into a good score. It's already looking like her best. She gets a decent finish. Nice little sequence of moves and a whole lot of water to deal with. A lot of bump on the face, but riding the rapids beautifully there. Oh, watch out, Bella. This is exactly where Sally starts to shine through, I think, with that, with that, even that little fade and the click up into the lip on that first turn. That's so, so indicative of how she feels going into 10 minutes back against the ropes. It just felt like she let go on this wave mm. and where she'd been a bit, uh, you know, holding back. She just went into that turn with so much speed, a bit of a speed check, but uh, it got wobbly through here and she held through it. The wave didn't really look too fancy, but she slashed up into the pocket here and then unloaded there. So getting some nice turns in, not the same drama that we've mm. seen from Bella, but I think this will come in at a good, good score mid-range yeah. and get her back in this really yeah i think it's going to be pretty comparable the the five six seven might even go a little farther but we'll we'll see nine and a half minutes to go waiting on those numbers to come through a really important score here for sally fitzgibbons because look at the requirement prior to this number coming in 9.77 that's going to be a very difficult wave to find out in this lineup at the moment so this is really going to help our chances. You'd think it's going to chip away at that requirement. We're waiting on that number to drop, but I think a master stroke from Isabella Nichols to employ just the uh, local expertise of Matt Granger. He, he runs the Manly Surf School. Uh, he's a, a great surfer and uh, was a fantastic competitor as well. He, uh, he has a couple of brothers, Tim and Arnie, who surf really well. And any time the swell is huge, Matt Granger and his mate, Captain Gribble, will be out here at North Narrabeen chasing the bombies out off Long Reef. There's some misto reefs out there that oh. they'll, uh, they'll tackle. And, uh, yeah, he's a, he's a part of a, a big wave throng that it includes the likes of Barton Lynch and Tom Carroll when they're around on the beaches. They're basically scouting the peninsula, looking for the biggest waves that they can find. And Sally Fitzgibbons, she drops a number that really chips away at the requirement, a 6.07. And now she needs a 7.78, and she's very capable of getting that. So the final is on. Final is absolutely on, and uh, Sally would know what it takes to get an eight out here today just from watching those men's heat. She won't know what Bella would have done on her eight, but I, I feel like she'd be able to guess it was two big turns because, uh, you know, the judges just are scoring those really well-surfed, connected, big, big uh, attacking sections. So, yeah. I feel she'd like this... Oh, sorry, Laura. No, she'd be, I think she would be feeling pretty good going through the, the final seven minutes. I think this was going all one way up until that point. For me, that's the most important exchange for this final. And somehow we've just blasted through almost 40 minutes and we're down to the seven mark. But that exchange and Sally are realising been up against it, it I feel like it, it kind of made me feel like when you watch like a footy game and teams are they they get these almost moments that Sally had on both of her falls she like almost found herself a six or a seven on a one yeah. turn and almost looked really clicked in and it and then suddenly everything aligns everything comes back together and now although Bella's in front I feel like Sally has that changing point in the final and the momentum to play out that eight point ride and she knows what it looks like she's seen bella on it she found herself a six she knows what she doesn't want to look for now she's yeah. like pretty much process of elimination to get herself back into the chance but i mean bella has priority so there's there's a few things that have to go right for sally to take this final yeah bella's gonna have to be really smart with priority here either hold her off on what she sees as a as a nice wave six and a half minutes to go and, uh, the, you know, this is a high-pressure situation for both competitors. Sally does need uh, pretty much an excellent score to turn this final around. But Isabella, she'd be feeling the, the nerves because Sally's oh. really got herself back in this final now. Yeah, 7.78 from Sally is uh, so attainable. And, and Isabella knows that. That's almost a, you know, it has to be a two-turn wave. You know, you, I can't imagine that. Sally would be able to get a 7.7 .7 on one turn, but we have seen mm. that go down this event. We have seen some really wild surfing, and what Sally has in her 
her repertoire is that really gnarly lip line backhand uh, float. Yeah. And she could do that on an intense section on the inside, do a check turn before that, and, and that would easily get up into that excellent range. Five and a half minutes to go. So much history, surf history, here on the northern beaches of Sydney. Got to go all the way back to 64, the first World Surfing Championships, where Midget Farrelly and Phyllis O'Donnell were victorious. And then uh, we had, obviously, the, the surf about on the northern beaches as well with massive results for so many uh, icons of the sport on the women's side. An incredible honour roll that one of these competitors is going to be joining. But Northern Beaches greats, I mean, there's been plenty of them. Lane Beachley, uh, obviously, seven-time world champion. Pam Burridge, she was one of my heroes growing up. I just loved her style, the Akubra, just rocking out. Amazing goofy footer and, uh, and world champion. And then... Our very own Laura Enova mm. here on the uh, commentary team through the Australian leg and at this venue. And Laura, we're in awe of, of what you've been doing in the big wave realm recently. I, I know your ride from uh, over there this Hawaiian winters sort of being talked about as maybe a world record breaker for the biggest wave paddled into by a woman. How does that make you feel? Oh, it feels weird, honestly. But uh, yeah, that was such a magical session over there at one of the outer breaks. Uh, in, it was actually the day of the Eddie Swells, so sort of paddled out there with me and Fel Felicity Palmatier, who's also been on the commentary team, and we just have been pushing each other, which has been really cool. But, uh, yeah, excited to try get some waves after after this today. Yeah, just just looking at you, I have to say, how do you do it with those little arms? They're like <laughs> flamingo legs. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, uh, they, I don't know. They're effective. Yeah, they're effective. They're efficient. Mm. <laughs> oh, I think it's the heart. She's got a half the size of Texas. And uh, <laughs> let's dive into the recap here. Some amazing moments for Isabella, getting herself on some bigger waves. That's where she's found the edge over Sally, Sally Fitz so far. Yeah, she's just stayed really present. She's gone to that really nice carve down to set up those big sections. And here's the criticalness of her surfing that has her in the lead of the final. And this was the fight back wave from Sally Fitz. This has really got her back in this heat. I love that first turn. It was like a big speed check. Got a bit bumpy here, which is what kept the score down, but she made the most of this inside section. I just love seeing her just attack these sections and uh, really push into it. She, she just hasn't had the opportunity to square up yet, Sal, and, and that's really where she ha has had success at the championship tour level, even uh, against, I, I think, some of the other regular footers on the CT. She always had a really nice vertical approach in her backhand surfing and she's just begging for that opportunity now because it feels like she's going to need it to turn this final around. Yeah, and, and about her backhand too, she I like how she actually rides through the turn. I don't feel like when I watch Shelly's backhand that she places that backhand up into the lip and, and then lets the wave bring her down and that's what's going to be the difference of the five sixes and into the eights because she, she pushes and and powers through the bottom of her backhand turns, and that gives her the chance to be in the right section yeah, if she, it comes, like, the two turns. She generates speed, mm. and that's what she did on that six. She she hit that first section and came out, out of it with more speed, which is what the judges really love. Yeah, can this uh, three-time runner-up to the world title turn in the, this big number needed? She's uh, definitely up against it. Priority's not on her side at the moment. Isabella's been really sharp with her wave selection so far. And it, and it, it really feels like on Isabella's last ride, she kind of found something. On her first few rides, it was a little shaky, a bit nervous. But just putting herself on those bigger sets has helped her find a, that edge. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, Isabella, when we think of her surfing, you wouldn't think that a chunky beach break left would be her strength. but. How amazing for her to come down here this week and, and just adapt to every sort of condition that we've had. We've, we've touched on it throughout, you know, the week and, and throughout this heat now. But uh, if she can hold on here, this would be a really big turning point, I feel like, in her career. Yeah, obviously that, that determination, you know, driving her to this great performance at the moment. She knows that she wants the win. She knows getting a victory doesn't even guarantee you a place in the top five on the Challenger Series at the end of the season. But it certainly puts you on your way. Yeah, we saw some of the ladies last year get a, a win in a Challenger Series in two quarterfinals and still end up below the uh, qualifying mark. So it's all about consistency, but this will be... Ooh, oh, looks there like we a go. A couple of hero duck dives underwater. Just 
in the death roll at the moment. Sally kind of punched through it. Oh, it gives her a bit of a gap too at this 40 second stage. Just a little bit of distance and, and Bella Bean just tumble, wow. tumble dried in there. Well, yeah. Sally just scouring this line up here at the moment. There could be a wave standing up here with just 30 seconds to go. It looks like it might cap. Sal in position. Has a think about it. It sweeps her out of position a, a little. Bella's still fighting to get back to that takeoff zone. Fitzgibbons is going to have to make a move here and take an insider. She's trying to get herself in position. 10 seconds to go. Isabella Nichols hanging on with priority still. And it is going to come to a close with the surfer from the Sunshine Coast, the 25-year-old <laughs> who was dropped from the CT, <laughs> turning things around after a poor result on the Gold Coast. Isabella Nichols is the champion here at the GWM Sydney Surf Pro, presented by Bonsoy. And it was a heroic performance, Laura. Yeah, what a moment for Bella. You can see the emotion starting to sink in here. She she basically stole this from Sally's bread and butter and uh, <laughs> just uh, working her way in. That was so exciting to watch. And Oh, Sal's going to be a threat at each of the venues mm -hmm. on the Challenger Series. We, we made note of that before the first event got underway. Just too strong and so consistent in her performances. It, it was a rare uh, final for her. She just found nothing. Her, the rhythm wasn't on her side. And to Isabella Nichols' credit, when she had a, a big section standing up in front of her, she gave it what for. Yeah, and I mean... Watch out for the rest of the competitors for Sally for the rest of the season because she does her best work in this format and this situation. It just suits her so well. So a great result for her, yes, but it is, it's an Isabella day. I would be surprised if we don't see some tears and emotion because of, we, of what we've known that's going behind the scenes and, and into a win like this. That's so true. Yeah, she did. She was holding it together yeah. after Margaret River. Uh, she's a, a really intelligent competitor. Uh, but I, I think she was, you know, burying that emotion and I, I'm sure it, it bubbled over when she got away from the, the broadcast cameras. The Challenger Series event on the Gold Coast, you know, that was a, a heavy blow. She had great surfing, free surfing performances in the quality conditions and the lead up to that event. But like I said, you know, it, once she put the jersey on it, it just felt like she had no confidence. But she's, she's tapped into something at this venue. Yeah, what it takes mentally to turn around you know, mm. in so quickly what's uh, happened and really processed and, and, you know, I guess you're doing so much reflecting on that first half and you have to let it go to be able to come out here and win. And, and uh, that, I feel like this just just means for her that she's let it go and she's ready to <laughs> head into the next part of the year. And Sally Fitz, what an absolute gem. Yeah, well, these two uh, have been on this ride together through the uh, first couple of Challenger Series events. You know, Sally Fitzgibbons, for the second year in a row, didn't make the cut. So she uh, knows exactly what Isabella has been through. Salvo, through these first two events, has back two unbelievable results. She's going to be hard to knock off that, that top end of, of the Challenger Series ranks. India's going to maintain that number one position, but this is a beautiful moment. Yeah, there's an understanding between these two women and, and almost like a sisterhood in surfing, and they, they realise what's gone into this for both of them, and particularly for Isabella to claim the win and, and just hold that presence throughout the whole contest, regardless of the mayhem that goes on around the contest and all the kids and all the cameras. It's an incredible win for her, great for Australian surfing and great for both of their positions on the ranks yeah huge i think you know this is going to mean as much to isabella as her victory in the championship to her event last year because this is really the start of her road back to the ct for sure behind every victory is a story that we would have no idea about and uh, this for bella is just going to mean so so much to catapult her into the rest of the year yeah ellie harrison there on the chair gabby spake behind her as well Sally Fitz, of course, flanking on the shoulder. Oh, Sal is, I mean, she's got so much stamina. She's been out there just battling these tough conditions and probably did a lot more work physically in that heat, just getting back out there after her rides than Isabella. But uh, first person there to help chair her to the podium. Yeah, and she'll probably go for a uh, 6K run after this as well. <laughs> just might. One of the, debrief one of, the final. Yeah, debrief it all, but... Uh, Absolute sportsmanship from these ladies. I'd love to see it. And oh, incredible, yeah. And 
All right, and here we go. The Irukandji cheer is uh, going to come on now. Let's listen in. They, they did it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All the Grums too, morning off school to watch Isabella take the crown there. Oh, so they should be too, you know, uh, watching history unfold here at North Narrabeen once again. A uh, beautiful moment here as Isabella Nichols continues to celebrate an amazing victory. Your champion for the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy. We're going to take a quick break. We'll chat with Isabella in just a moment and get set for the men's final. Welcome back to the show. What a show it's been. We just saw Isabella Nichols win through here. And uh, it's going to be a, an emotional afternoon for her. Not a great result for it. Stop one on the Challenger Series, but turning it all around here in big conditions at North Narrabeen. Here on the Harvey Norman host set, Laura Hennevin now joined also by Richie Lovett. Rich, what did you make of it? Uh, I, I thought it was amazing. You know, we were, it was a win-win, really, for whoever uh, took that, that final down. But uh, great to see Isabella. Just knowing the road that she's been going through for the last couple of weeks and the downs, now we're on an extreme high. Uh, but great to see her get the win there. Sally's on a, on a roll too, really consistent, coming off the Gold Coast, getting a great result here. So she's uh, well on track to make it back on the, onto the tour. We're getting set for the men's final now. Let's have a look at how we found these two individuals. Great surfing throughout the contest as we have a look at the Bailey Ladders bracket here. Have a look at those stacked quarterfinal heats. But Cole Hausman on the top side of the draw, Laura, has been on fire. He absolutely have, has, you know, a 33rd over at Snapper Rocks. And coming down here, he's just looked like, from the get-go, from Heat 1, one of the, the men to beat in this event. And to be standing up here in the final today, wow. One of the biggest, well, this will be the biggest result of his career. Oh, no doubt. Jacob Wilcox, Rich, uh, across all conditions this past week. And we've seen it all. Uh, he has looked really on point. Yeah, it was uh, real heavy hitting. Surfers on the top bracket, the, the bottom bracket, a bit more precision and, and uh, style and grace there, but we're off and running. We sure are, and it's going to be San Clemente's Cole Hausman getting started here, driving up into this section. Huge swoop. Oh, he's on his way to a big number. This is a replay, this one during the break. And what a wave it was, Laura. Oh, that is a way to start off your first Challenger Series final. Let's see what Jacob Wilcox does behind him. Second wave of the set, and Jacob Wilcox gets a big old swoop to start things off. Gets right back into that power source. Another big open face wave. He's been going to this fade all day. Does he get the final hit? Thinks better of it. So two big clean hits, but you've got to give the edge to Cole Houshman in that opening exchange. The cheer squads are on hand down there on the beach. Of course, Jacob Wilcox. And he's going to have plenty of support from the Aussie contingent. They've all stuck around to watch the finals unfold here today. But Cole Hausman, you know, getting a, a lot of loud cheers. That posse of surfers from San Clemente. 
labelling themselves the 2% crew. Uh, they have been very vocal throughout the uh, the rounds for all competitors. But, you know, with the big numbers Cole's been dropping, he's been probably saving <laughs> or, or getting the lion's share of the, the big yells and applause. Maybe they'll be 3% after uh, all their amazing results on the start of the year. So uh, a 40-minute final here, and big numbers gonna, are going to come through on that first exchange. But, yeah, I, I think I'm with you, Rich. Just Cole moving with a bit more speed through his turns. Wasn't washing off as much speed. Really just driving into those sections with uh, every bit of energy that the wave was serving him. Yeah, I think that's uh, the difference there. You know, he was always working down the line. And have a look at this score. Massive number to start this final for Cole Hausman. A 9.17. And uh, really couldn't ask for too much more. That's instantly putting pressure on the young Aussie. Yeah, Cole's been on the Challenger Series the past couple of years. 2021, he had a 26th place. 2022, 57th. Just ninth as his best result. So this is massive for him. Here's a replay of that amazing opening ride. Oh, that second turn, he just came around that huge section up high into the lip. It's another little wrap here and then attacks that end section. Perfect timing, so a, a great four-turn combination here. And that is the money turn, just big old swoop. And this guy is a wrecking ball, man. He is just manhandling these uh, big solid lefts here at Narrabeen. Yeah, showing the judges something different as well. You know, he was getting eight-point rides for just two turns throughout this event. So to get that four-turn combination and keeping speed and flow throughout out there today, Oh, the, may, the mayhem by Matt Biolis under his feet has, you know, in, in all conditions, those boards are, have just looked up. unbelievable. He hasn't skipped the beat, Rich. He, he's had so many big moments in this contest and so many big scores. Yeah, he really has. You know, it's um, it's been a really uh, sort of dominant performance that he's, look out. that he's put on here. He's got more. Well, has a look at this one and why not? It'll help him uh, find the... The true takeoff zone here. Sally kind of felt like Sally sat a little deep at different stages throughout the women's final. And, and Cole not wanting to make that mistake, but a 9.17 opener for Cole, Cole Hausman. Jacob Wilcox almost three points behind with a 6.5. And while there's a, a break in the action out the back, let's check in with the champion of the GWM, Sydney Surf Pro, presented by Bonsoy, down there with Stace. Thanks, Ron. Isabella Nichols, you are the champion. Congratulations. Thanks, Stace. Um, yeah, well, I didn't see that happening at the start of the week. Um, coming into this in a bit of a bad headspace and, yeah, in, in all vulnerability, like, I wasn't even sure if I was going to surf in the contest because I just wasn't, wasn't there mentally. Um, and so, yeah, to claw my way back, surround myself with good people. I've got Maddie Granger in my corner. I've got Kurt Jacobs, Bottle, Pete, the whole surfing Oz crew. Um, these young girls down here that went and bought my jersey and supported me from day one, like, those are the people that lift you up and that's how things like this can happen. Maddie Granger said to me, you guys went and packed some closeouts down the beach halfway through the week. That would have been a bit of fun to bring the uh, grommet hood back. <laughs> Honestly, every morning before the contest, we didn't even surf the comp bank. I was sleeping in and I was going and surfing closeouts with Maddie and he would literally froth out on taking off on like the worst waves and just pack it and come up just hooting going, woo. And so I tried to adapt, uh, adopt a bit of that um, enthusiasm and stoke and froth. And he, uh, he helped me a lot this week. And um, yeah, all those Shory sessions paid off because that was gnarly. <laughs> I know you got a lot of support around the world, but particularly mum and dad back home. Hey, mum and dad. Um, I'm sure they're, you know, sitting there watching and super stoked for me. And I love you guys so much. And thanks always for the support. And a lot of support here. On you girls. Yay! Woo! <laughs> Back to you guys, Ron. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Isabella Nichols. You know, what a, what a great moment for her. And, and you could sense that that's a, amazing to think that she wasn't going to surf the event. Uh, you know, that gives you a, a great idea of just what she's gone through as we get back to live action here. Cole Hausman is deep in the barrel. Oh, my gosh. Through. He almost got there. Oh, he's he nearly he's made that. Out of body form at the moment. <laughs> That was rare. Some of his body limbs came out of that barrel, but uh, that was... <laughs> oh, he got 98% of the way there. He just missed that little 2% at the end. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, 
it would have been hard not to drop a 10 onto that. Oh, but, man, uh, so deep. Have a look at this thing. Driving, pumping down the line, and then it goes through this section here, almost opens up for him. But, uh, wow, this guy is on. 31 and a half minutes to go. Scores starting to roll through. Obviously uh, not going to go into the top two, but he does hold the lead and holds a massive advantage with that 9.17. Jacob Wilcox. I think he's going to have to wash off a little less speed. Just the, the momentum that the coal train is just powering into turns at the moment. It's just incredible. Just uh, really able to harness the power. You know, in bigger conditions, we see it from John John Florence. Often uh, he just refuses to, to, to wash off any speed when he's attacking those big calves and, and those big front side hits. And that's kind of the, the same sort of approach Coles had on his run through to this final, Laura. For sure. And these waves are not easy to surf. You can see the lump, you can see the, the chatter, but the way Cole is able to just plough through these waves with flow and uh, just so much style is just unbelievable. There's a difference when a, a surfer is tapping into the power and, and really pushing against it in these bigger conditions rather than just going with the power and finding moments uh, that are a little bit more safe and conservative to hit and Cole is just stepping up and going toe to toe with the power of the ocean at the moment and it is a, a pretty ferocious ocean. Yeah it's just you know uh, as opposed to the the women's final where we saw Bella almost figuring out the conditions on each wave. Cole just went out there, made a, an incredible statement. It's a, it's a huge benchmark that, that Jacob Wilcox is going to have to lift to. The 9.17, you know, it was almost like they had similar room to move on those rides. And Jacob, his turn is just a, a little less momentum through the move, a, a little less on edge. And uh, he's, he's going to have to step it up big time. Yeah, what Jacob has to feel, you know, positive and confident about is that in his semi-final, he was basically getting, you know, a 6-5 for one big turn. And, you know, going down on the second turn a couple of times, he said that he had some absolute beatings out there this morning. So, you know, thinking of that 917, he, he knows that if he can just do two big, powerful turns on, on heavy sections, that he can go up there as well. Massive, massive result already for Cole Hauschman, the biggest of his career. But he's also got the bonus with this final of jumping ahead of Crosby Cola Pinto on the Challenger Series rankings. That means that he's going to get a ticket into the Surf Ranch Pro. It'll be his first CT event. Jacob Wilcox, on the other hand, he's had 13 CT appearances in the past and uh, he's made a good use of them. He's had some big moments. The, the best of them a quarterfinal finish down at Bells in 2019. But the reason why, you know, Jacob is so celebrated is he's free surfing. Uh, he's only really just sort of starting to get to the point now where he's, I, I think, realising his potential with the jersey on, but into dust by default, the, the clips that he worked on with Isaac Jones and, you know, that were so beautifully shot by some of the best lensmen over in that area. Got to give props to Tom Jennings. That, those clips have been celebrated by the best surfers in the world. So everyone very interested to see Jake make that, you know, uh, jump to the next level, the elite level, so he can test himself against the world's best. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, we keep talking about his style of surfing. It's CT level, it's CT worthy. And um, it feels like in 2023, he's found that competitive formula uh, and he's married it with all that free surfing ability. And, and now we're starting to see the payoff. And uh, well, in his first semi-final, he never, really connected with a, a beautiful wave that that allowed him that three-turn combination and I feel like that's been the, the difference is the wave choice. Cole just taking inside one here. Yeah, why not? Wants to get rid of the 3.67. Already has the benefit of dropping the biggest number of the heat so far. This wave's provided quite a few opportunities for him to lay into turns. They are a little repetitious though if you were going to pick it apart. So the number probably won't go too high but likely that it's going to improve on that 367 rich <laughs> little golf little, clap yeah. little golf clap from <laughs> yeah, they, uh, from his us crew it wasn't a, a uh, they know. A, yeah, yeah it wasn't leaving, a uh, a total cheer and a, a leaving convincing. the pots and pans for the uh, the big turns <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah they know there's more to give but a, a good backup to the nine though you're right so a big swooping roundhouse cut back 
a little foam rebound here, waiting for it to bowl up. Now he gets to work. Engaging that rail a little bit more through these middle turns. And then a bit of S work down the line here. He'll uh, get back out the, out the back and wait for a better wave. Jacob Wilcox, I, I mean, if Cole Hausman came out of that barrel, Jacob Wilcox, you know, Cole could have probably sat back and just watched the rest of the final. Uh, that was so close to being a 10-point ride, I think. And, uh, yeah, he just missed it. So we're still waiting on the scores to come through. Probably going to be a, quite a bit of consideration going into this number just based on the fact it was an insider and, and he really didn't carry the same kind of a aggression through each of those turns as he had on the 917. He was just hoping that wave would maybe stand up a, a little on the inside. But we'll see where the judges go with it. First couple of numbers, pretty positive. 5.5. Okay. So pretty well rewarded, really. Yeah, I had a uh, I had a high four in my mind. Just comparing it against Jacob's 6.5. Uh, uh, it was a big, you know, bigger set and did those two big major manoeuvres. So I thought it was, it was sort of two points, one and a half, two points under that. But uh, the judges obviously liking that combination in the middle of the ride. Yeah, I can see where your head's at with that and, and why... You know, with 25 and a half minutes to go, it, it might seem semi inconsequential that number. The requirement for Jacob at the moment is 8.18, and if you're saying that there's there was maybe a half a point too much in that number, it just pushes that requirement to a point where, in your head, you you know you're, you're thinking you you maybe need more than you do. But Jacob's capable of, of turning in that score. We know that. Let's have another look at it. I mean, nothing really in that first turn. The second's probably the best one on it. Yeah, this, this second and third turn combination here, they were a little bit repetitive, but, you know, they were they were good carving turns. The wave was really an insider. Oh, yeah, I think it was too high, personally. But uh, Jake Wilcox, this is the replay of his 6-5. Five, five, uh, yeah, so a bigger turn to start off with straight away. And the second one, big drawn-out carve. And uh, a complete wave there. Jacob just not opting to to deal with that last section, rightly so. And then Jacob had this one while we're watching that replay. Let's have a look at it. Oh, whoa. So uh, oh, gets a little bit going of, again. A little bit of vision there. Well, let's have a look straight up into this section. Backdoors it. A little bit clean, but could he have pulled into that? <laughs> he could have. He would have got smashed. I think he's already picking enough sand out of his ears from the last heat. So. Oh, it's... Yeah, I think like as as kind of dr dramatic and, and fun as that barrel was to ride, I, I really don't think that's the type of wave yeah. that Jacob's really you hunting could, for. You could risk snapping your board as well, which would just really eat away at time. So I think smart to just forego that sandy. From the, from the angle looking into the... The section, it, it looks semi-makeable. The front on angle, yeah, I think Jacob made the right choice. Matty Granger would have been in there. Wave selection-wise, I don't think it was the right choice, though. Uh, yeah. just, just not big enough. You're really, you know, putting so much faith in, in the ride, uh, actually opening up and, and stretching out. It still looks like he's going to chip away at this requirement, though, with that ride. Yeah, I guess, you know, barrels today are really hard to come by, and they're... They're pretty high risk in terms of your placement and, and how you've got to position yourself to get in there. And uh, the judges clearly appreciating that. Yeah, the numbers are rolling through. We're still waiting on three to drop, so that average still might come down a little bit. Yeah, it looks like it's going to uh, probably just edge ahead of his opening ride here. 22 minutes and 45 seconds to go. What a week. Yeah, 6.73. So the requirement, a, a 7.95. And, uh, you, you know, you, you look at that as a, a positive, even if it's just a, a slight jump up in the uh, the scoreline. Yeah, chipping away. And you'd have to think that Cole's uh, barrel would have gone near excellent if that was a 6.73. Six, so that, like you were saying, Ronnie, could have spelled absolute danger. 22 minutes remaining here. Stays, we've been so blown away by the performance of Cole throughout this uh, event. It seems that big win on that regional QS has just sort of helped him figure out the formula. 
Yeah, I think so, Ron. And uh, the conditions down here really suited him this week. Uh, Matt, you've been doing great work with Cole. You must be uh, extremely pleased with the start here in this final. Yeah, I mean, like, this is my first year working with Cole, just two events in and already his career best result. And just that guy has always had the talent. You know, he's had it in him, and it just it's just come into play right now, and everyone on the whole world stage gets to see it, which is pretty exciting. Oh, I could be wrong, but he's got pretty high expectations to live up to. Two events in with Rio, you guys went back-to-back. -back. Yeah, it's been a good couple of years. We got a, a win with Brisa, one with Alyssa last year, a couple with Rio, and um, it's just, you know, puffing these guys and girls up with a bunch of confidence and belief in themselves and letting the surfing do the rest. Talking about the surfing and digesting scores, we think a little high on Cole's backup, which then puts Jacobs even higher again. How is that as a surfer sitting out there breaking that all down? Any any tips for those guys? Uh, it's totally fine. He's in a great spot. Jacob still needs an excellent wave. You know, 795 is basically an eight. So Cole's in a beautiful position with 21 minutes left a lot of times. So we can never count out Jacob. I think he's one of the world's best surfers and someone who I definitely think is going to qualify this year as well. But um, Cole's in a beautiful place right now. You have to think Cole's not too far behind him in that chance to qualify. Thanks for your time, Matt. Good on you, Stace. Yeah, Matty Myers doing great work. And you know, Cole Hauschman, like I said before, he has been on the Challenger Series the past couple of years. His best results prior to this were, were ninths. Um, but, you know, relatively kind of, with full respect, a, a little invisible in the past in those Challenger Series events. But something's clicked for sure. And uh, a lot of self-belief at the moment incredibly consistent on his run through this contest i think relishing the opportunity to compete an event with a, a bit of punch a bit of energy in the lineup and uh you know even when the the conditions dropped off he looks super sharp 20 minutes to go here and cole houseman holding on to the lead with a big 9.17 and jacob wilcox after a 7.95 at the moment we're going to take a bonsoi brew break Destination New South Wales, official strategic sponsor of the GWM Sydney Surf Pro, presented by Bonsoy and uh, New South Wales. The entire East Coast has been good to us this week and our competitors, even those that fell out of the mix early, have enjoyed exploring this region, the northern beaches, a couple ducking over the city to enjoy beautiful food and some of the uh, many restaurants in this area. The Phil New Sydney flight cam, we've been enjoying that view and especially today giving us great scope on these bigger conditions that we have here for our finals. And during uh, the break, we didn't see a whole lot of action, but just now Jacob Wilcox having a crack at one, but a shutdown on the inside. 
good final on our hands here, though, Laura. Absolutely. I mean, 795 for Jacob Wilcox. That is a, it's a big number. But in these conditions today, if he can find the right wave, it is an attainable score. Jacob Wilcox from Margaret River, 25 years of age. Been uh, chasing a spot on the CT for uh, a number of years. I think got a couple of heat wins uh, away at Halieva on the old QS format. But he is, uh, he's just desperate to get there and, and be making some big sacrifices to make it happen, moving to the East Coast to sharpen up his small wave game, helped him get a good result on the Gold Coast, helped him through a couple of tricky rounds here, and here he is in the final chasing a win. Yeah, he came in at uh, 13th on the rankings last year on the Challenger Series, right behind Morgan, Sibley and Dylan Moffat, who was one spot out. So, uh, you know, just so gnarly going down to those final final uh, you know events and really a couple of heats away heartbreaking yeah much like uh sally fitzgibbons though regardless of what happens in this final rich jacob's going to be uh right up there near the top end of the ranks leaving australia yeah it's uh it's a great result for him and and you take a lot of confidence in that going into a bit of a break before we head to Bolito as well so you can, can kind of sit with that here we go. Cole Hausman using his priority here. Driving up into the pocket. A really well-timed hit. Oh. Tries to land the big float over a section, which was just getting rounder and rounder as he rode it. And he just kind of got away from his equipment. Needed to stay over the top of it. But even then, it's not a guarantee that you're going to stick a, a fall that big. Yeah, I love that approach from Cole. And that's what he needs to do at this point in the heat to better that 5-5. And that would have gone there. Love this first turn. It was... Unbelievable that he didn't catch an edge coming down, but heading up, he's smashing that and then holding on, but that would have been a really hard combo to pull off. This is a really good indication of when someone's this switched on, Rich. Yeah, Bumpy section, kind of cupping at the top, and he still placed it beautifully. Yeah, it was like it was a perfectly smooth, groomed wall, not uh, a face with all that bump and chatter all over it. He just drove through it so smoothly, and I, I loved how he came down off that first turn, straight into that next one. Trying to get up there. He's just checking the equipment now, because that was a big fall. That was heavy. But what it's done is handed priority back to Jacob Wilcox, who needs this score. And there's still time. Just over 14 minutes to go. A lot could still happen in this final. Yeah, they're big uh, heat tallies already, aren't they, really? Throughout the event, we've seen uh, these numbers. Uh, easily dropped to get through heats, but we're in the final. Yeah, uh, Cole Hausman could have really turned the heat up on Jacob Wilcox sticking that final move then. Still trying to replace this 5.5, and at the moment, Jacob almost got a 7. So he's well within reach of the lead at the moment. I mean, if Jacob gets the score, the, you know, there's a really good chance Cole's still going to turn it around. Uh, we could see a bit of a seesawing battle unfolding here in the final 14 minutes. I love to see it. We love those finals that do that. Lead changes back and forth. Richie, you were touching on it just before. You know, with a month and a, a bit before Bolito, the surfers coming out of this event, they get to hold on to that winning feeling mm. for a lot longer than, you know, the Snapper Rocks surfers that did really well. They had to turn it around quickly, maybe leaving... No, without that feeling if they haven't done so well, but these surfers get to really relish and uh, feel that for a while. Yeah, the uh, the others are kind of leaving feeling like losers. It's heavy. <laughs> so well, it's, it's, uh, you've got to marinate on that for a while. Yeah, that's you don't like that. It tends to stick around, that feeling, for a while until the next event, until your next heat win. But what this is doing as well, it's really putting... Cole Hausman in, into some conversations amongst everyone. Oh, yeah. A and, you know, I, I, I'm guilty of it. Last year, I would see Cole in the draw, and I'd be like, oh, yeah, you know, he got a bit of a chance here. But I never really pegged him as one of the guys that I really wanted to, to watch and, and, and follow. And But now, after seeing what he's done in Australia here, and in particular this event, I'm converted. I'm a huge fan. I want to see more of this guy. Uh, and have to think that the judges would probably be feeling the same way as well, going, wow, this oh, guy's yeah. on. Well, we, we definitely saw him even prior to the first Challenger Series event because he had that wild haircut. And, uh, yeah, he's actually <laughs> yeah, kept just... himself in the spotlight with his performances. Uh, the Gold Coast, it didn't work out for him, but 
you know, some of the surfing that he was doing just up there in the free surfs uh, looks strong. Yeah, he, he seems to have it all. Like the, the backhand is sharp. When we're, you know, we, we started on lefts. We moved down to car park rights. There were some left bowls off car park rights. We got back to the alley. And at no point has he looked out of touch. As we see Jacob Wilcox here looking for a big turn down the line. Oh, this one gets away from him. So this one doesn't help him either. Jay Bottle Thompson watching on. I think he just said, why? He's going wide to go that wave. Uh, that thing stretched out. There wasn't obvious points on that ride. It felt like he was just trying to go for that big end turn, but unfortunately he just couldn't get there in time. Wave yeah. running away from him. Just had a little glitch on that bottom turn as well. And uh, we'll probably see that in the replay. Just got caught off on that rail and didn't have that momentum and that engagement onto the face where he could really control and direct his surfboard. Watch the replay here. So that classic fade to put himself in position, a nice slash to open up. And then just see there, he went for the pump and the board got away from him. Just hit a little ridge. It looks like the wind's actually started to puff up a little bit out of the northeast. Jacob Wilcox oh. on the inside, finding some cover. He was so close to punching through that curtain. Maybe looked for the exit a, a little early, but it was always going to be a, you know, it's a rat trap situation. And uh, unfortunately, got his head stuck in it. It feels like you know this is an Australia versus USA heat out in the lineup, but you can feel it on the beach too. The two crews. Oh, they're punchy sections too. So much energy concentrated on, on the the closeout section of these rides, Rich. Yeah, big old nasal flush, and uh, it'll probably come back out at some point tonight when he's leaning over having a bite of his dinner. But uh, these guys, uh, you know, they're earning it today. They sure are. Just under 10 minutes to go. Jacob fighting, but but so far, you know, uh, the best he's been able to manage is a 6.73. Cole what? Hausman, though. He wants to get rid of this 5.5, and he wants to do it uh, with his next use of priority. He's had a couple of shots at it. Well, Jacob's been stuck on sixes all day at the moment, and he hasn't been able to crack into that seven and an excellent range despite surfing just so incredibly. So that tells me that it's wave choice. Here we go, Cole Hausman making a move. Can he dump the 5-5 five five here and really put the pressure oh, on Jacob Wilcox? Wow. Big flare on the tail, drives up into the bowl. Really fast in transition, and as a result, he's able to get back out in front of that wave. And that's going to be a big score. Two big hits. And that is really uh, probably going to push him up into the excellent range once again here. Wow. Well, Jacob Wilcox made an error there with wave selection, and he just paid for it big time. That, that could have been his. And the Should way the cookie, cookie crumbles, it's, uh, it's going to be a tough one to swallow when he hears his score come through. Oh, he'd, he'd wish he had earplugs in right now. Yeah, well, that's why uh, Bottle Thompson was saying why, because eventually this wave was going to turn up, and Cole Hausman has just absolutely taken advantage oh. of it at first turn, just uh, oh. showing us something new, a bit of slide, a bit of progression in a solid double overhead wave. Watch this turn here, just leans into it, gets some tail release. Perfect control as he comes out, sets up this final section, tags it, and uh, just steadies himself and rides out. <laughs> Mate, that face was so cupped out at the end of that ride. This could be better than his first wave. This is an unbelievable ride. The, the read on the first section, coming up under the bowl like that and releasing the fins. Look at the scores coming through from the panel now. Cole Hausman from San Clemente. Last start, finally surfed on the regional QS. He had a 9.5. He is going to better that right now. One judge even throwing a 10 at it. Full commitment. That last section was so cupped out, Rich. He, he's read it beautifully. Yeah, it, like a millisecond earlier or later, it wouldn't have worked out. He picked the perfect line. He's dropped the 9.8. And he's uh, well, he's put Chippo in combination here. So this is... Uh, with seven and a half minutes to go, he has Mount Everest to climb. Yeah, it's it's not impossible, but it's virtually impossible. Oh, Jacob will just be so regretful of taking that wave. He, he would be fuming at himself right now, just going, why did I take that one? The thing is, though, it's, you know, it, it was 
really the, the opening exchange that has put Cole Hausman in this incredible position. Obviously, Jacob was on a great wave, maybe equally as good as Cole's wave, but he had a measured approach. And, and Cole came out here today, I, I think, just going, you know what, I'm going to give it everything I've got on every turn I go for. Yeah. And, and that's what's got him in this powerful position. He's out there now. He'd be buzzing. His heart would be leaping out of his chest, Laura. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that last wave you got, it was a nice wave. It wasn't the biggest wave that we've seen today, but he just attacked it so incredibly hard. And that's what the judges rewarded him. You know, someone could have surfed that wave to a seven, but he surfed it to a near excellent wave. Yeah, I think you're right. And, and to your point, Ron, he's throwing everything at it, but it's not, it's not willy-nilly. It's not like he's not throwing it away. The manoeuvres are so well placed. And the choice of manoeuvres on the wave is, is excellent. Uh, and that's why he's throwing these big numbers. He's not like just doing Hail Marys with, that he may not make, you know what I mean? But he is doing his best totally. surfing. Yeah, he's doing agree. his best surfing in a final when the pressure's on. Yep. Whereas it feels like Jacob is on the opening exchange. He was measured yeah. and, and didn't give it everything. And as a result, he was punished for it. And he's just been fighting to get himself back into that you know, position of... Uh, another opportunity. He just hasn't had another shot at a wave like that. And yeah. I think uh, he got a little frazzled. Well, both both these finals, it's really felt like one surfer has just been able to pick the eyes out of it and really be confident in their wave choice. And Cole, he's got the waves and he's just capitalised heavily on them. Five and a half minutes to go now. And, uh, yeah, the, obviously it's it's getting to the point now where finding two rides is going to be difficult. Well, he's in anything under a 9.03 and he's going to stay in combination. So he needs an excellent ride and he needs two of them. Seen something. There's some movement here. If he makes a move now, he might just get a shot. He's got to attack, though. Has to surf out of his skin here. Drives up into this first section. There's a more committed carb off the top. Up into the pocket again. This wave's starting to get a little ugly down the line, but he's going to stick with it. Drifts those fins and kicks out. You've got to compare what he did on that ride to, to what Cole Hausman did on bigger waves. And you kind of know that it's unlikely that he's going to break combination with that one. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Cole's wave, he had, you know, two turns on, on both of the... No, first wave, he had four turns, sorry, but they were all big sections, and uh, you just can't see that going into the excellent range. But... I loved his body language when he got up. He just looked like he was still in it. Yeah. But the body language when he pulled off was, uh, you could tell he, he felt a bit defeated. He knew it at the end of that ride. He just went, this is not a nine, and therefore uh, I'm in a sticky situation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Extremely. Just on four minutes to go, let's have a look at the Harvey Norman Heat recap. Cole Hausman just putting himself way ahead on the oh, opening exchange. Gosh, if you put a mirror up at inside bowl at sunset, it'd look like this. Have a go at it. These waves are just uh, super stretched out, powerful left-handers. And Cole Hausman, he's just stood up to them, performing some of the most amazing turns all day. Oh, I absolutely loved how he took off on the tip of the uh, the rip there as well. So we got so much of that wave, and it was a beauty. But this was Jacob's seven. This was his absolute best here. And uh, just getting under the cover here. But the waves is not really giving him what Cole's been able to find. And oh, He's just been getting these nuggets, haven't he, that are letting him... Just open up. There's open face for him to work with. Oh, man. There's such a good pace to them. They're allowing him to just go from one turn into the next with so much forward acceleration. Whereas Jacob, back to the pocket, back to the pocket, fading. So there's a real difference there. Man, the bottom turn before the final hit on Cole's 9.8 was a thing of beauty. So deep. And it was a steep section to read. Here goes Jacob again at this point. It's really just a, about putting up a, a solid score and work in the crowd because that that's just not the wave that's going to turn this final around for him his last wave it was reasonable but again another number in the sixes didn't go into his top two and Cole Hausman really just waiting for the clock to wind down so he can celebrate a win absolutely and it's going to be uh we're going to hear a few whistles from that uh two percent crew I feel like if you wanted to be in that group, you have to go to whistle training or something well, because they, uh, <laughs> they're going to have training. sore fingers. <laughs> There's a couple of grommets that I recognised in that little hanging around that pack. What's going on there? Are they kidnapped these kids or No, what? they've taken a whole bunch of the local crew and uh, they, they're all getting haircuts down at their house the other day. And yeah. 
they uh, they're growing. Yeah, I've seen Kaloha. Traders. He's been up and down the beaches, mate. He's got a little flute, the Pied Piper, <laughs> and he's Traders, just playing a tune. And he's got all the groms behind the San Clemente posse down here. So but uh, cool. you know what? I think they're just tapping into that yeah, energy. They, they had a, a little surf event. I know you're joking, Rich, but uh, they had a, a little surf event down here prior to the event getting underway, and uh, man, they. they the kids are feeling it. They're vibing it. And uh, I think everyone is fanning out on Cole Houseman right now. How can you not? The surfing has been excellent. And, uh, it, mate, if you keep surfing like this, if you can keep this form alive through the rest of the Challenger Series, uh, you'd love his chances, not just of making the CT, but really taking down some big names if he can get there. Yeah, and so many surfers in that group, they are young, and they're all pushing each other so heavily in these events. And uh, it's just, it's really cool to see what surfing can be produced and what you know results can be produced when you're backing your mates yeah huge uh four events is what you're counting on from the six challenger series contest sammy pupo winning on the gold coast you you don't see him falling out of the mix early at every single uh, event and the rest of the schedule uh cole houshman with a victory here you know you you just see him putting together a couple of more contests oh. as he flicks the tail. And he's going to ride out of this big flare up, right Crakey style. <laughs> he's loving it. And the boys. Uh, there we go. Oh, this is a big flex. They might even swim out and grab him. Yeah, they're, they're getting ready to actually pull him out of the water. You can only imagine the uh, Sunday that back at San Clemente right now as well would be absolutely blowing up. Yeah, we got to uh, just a tip of the hat to uh, Matt Biolas here. It was JS up on the Gold Coast with the win with Sammy Pupo. And uh, he's got the win here with Cole Houseman. He's working with all the, or more, the majority of these guys out of San Clemente. And the boards are looking really good. And obviously yeah. Matty Myers as well. Yeah, Matty's uh, done great work on the Challenger Series with the, the athletes that he's worked with. And here we go, the San Clemente crew, that 2% crew as they've named themselves, are going out to meet Cal Cole Houseman and his family be watching on back home. A big shout out to them, he I'm can't sure. Oh, this is huge. A massive moment. And really, he's come from nowhere to take the win here over seasoned campaigners like Jacob Wilcox. But what a performance in the final. Near perfect. <laughs> Look at those numbers. The best heat score total of the event. And he did it in the final. Yeah, amazing that's, stuff. That's the way. That's the way that what you want to do it. You want to peak in the final, and that's exactly what Cole Houseman has done here. The boys are celebrating. Kaloe's probably just trying to suck out a bit of <laughs> winning energy. But uh, what a moment here! <laughs> He's gonna need a chiropractor after this tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. I could say they're all just pushing the other one in front to see who chairs him all the way to the podium because he's 200 pound, 93 kg of just absolute surf master, master, master surfer. I, I just can't believe the excellent surfing from this guy. Well, they're probably all going to have to try and lift him up. Yeah, amazing. But yeah, hopefully it's... Uh, uh, I remember seeing Cole like five years ago and he was like half the size and he just grew up so quickly. He did huh? <laughs> Big unit. He is a unit now. Yeah, look, Crosby, Cola, Pinto, some of the, the, the other heavyweights in the pack are getting ready to cheer him up. It's sort of dwarf. It's going to be uh, as well. Kaloe and Dino and Crosby cheering him up. <laughs> what a moment for Cole Houseman. He is your champion at the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy. And didn't he earn the title? What an amazing finals performance. Oh, he wasn't just a standout today. He was a standout yesterday, the day before, day one. He has earned this well and truly. Jacob Wilcox, he served so well. Also a standout of the event. But this man, Cole, he, uh, I think the world knows his name now. And I, I do feel like we'll see him on that, that big leagues next year. <laughs> They're well, taking it turns. <laughs> <laughs> this is why they need such a big crew. Yeah, Taj Limblad and... Matty Myers there, relieving Crosby and Kalohe. Tag team. Yeah, good stuff. Jacob Wilcox, an amazing performance as well. Let's not uh, let's not forget about that man. Incredible yeah. stuff. He's obviously a little disappointed and uh, not to get the win after coming so close. But uh, man, he he is on. He's going to be there. So on and. Uh, 
super consistent through these first two events. He's going to be climbing that ladder right toward the top. He might even be uh, that number one surfer. And Cole Hauschman, man, what, what a performance. The 9.8 for me was just a thing of beauty, just on the attack, set the fins free, and then laid into maybe the deepest bottom turn that we saw all week to set up a huge hit on a cupped out section. Tag team challenge! Let's go! All the way! They're determined, aren't they? they don't, they're not going to let him touch the sand until he gets all the way to the top here at uh, the base of the surf club. We had such great crowds down here this week. A big shout out to everyone that came along. Probably a, a lot of people back at work watching it unfold. But some people, some uh, committed Groms in particular. Yeah, some Groms got the day off school to come watch. And I uh, saw a fair few crew getting the day off work as well. Two percent, that's the best. Hey, it's a hard one. Great scenes here. And Cole Hausman's gonna add himself to an incredible on a roll. Major victories here at North Narrabeen. Let's hear what the man's got to say for himself. Stace, what an unbelievable performance, mate. Thanks, Ron. 2.15 on a light day. Cole Hausman, the biggest unit in the draw. Single highest wave score of the event. Highest combined heat total. What a way to do it. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of speechless right now. So uh, it just all worked out in my favour and all the hard work's paying off. So thanks to all the boys too. Shout out to everyone. So stoked. Amazing rhythm out there. Every time you patter into a wave, it, it, it had big points in it and you executed. Yeah. <laughs> Two percent, boys. Thank you, guys. Uh, and yeah, I don't know what to say. I'm stoked. Fuck. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. Thank you. Greatest chair of all time. It took seven of them to do it. Yeah, I, I was kind of nervous on the switch off, but they hammered it. I'm impressed. So they've been training. <laughs> I'm sure you got a lot of family and friends watching back home. You want to sing out? Yeah, shout out to mom, dad, and uh, all the boys and friends, family at home. So, yeah, stoked. We did it. Yeah, well done. You have the champion of the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy. Don't go anywhere. We'll take a short break, and we'll be back with the post show and all the highlights.
It is the WSL Post Show here at the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonzoi. It was a short finals day, but oh, what a day it was. Kaipo along with Jess Grimwood and Richie Lovett. Oh, Richie, we just came off of two incredible finals. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Oh, what an incredible day of surfing to wrap up what's just been just the most varied and bizarre week of, of surf. It's been excellent. You know, the surfing's been of just the highest level, and we got some worthy champions down there today. Jess, I feel like I've been through like an emotional roller coaster <laughs> these past six days. Yeah, we have. We all have, haven't we? Yeah. Including the surfers. And I mean, that last final um, for Cole, uh, that was the best surfing that I've seen all year in competition, hands down. Best, yeah. best two waves. It's like a highlight reel of his whole surfing career in that final. Yeah, talking about peaking in the final. <laughs> Cole Hauschman did just that. Let's take a look at our men's bracket and his road to the final first. It was a quarterfinals yesterday in some tough conditions, uh, Rich, where he had to overcome Mark Lacamar. Yeah, a little smaller yesterday, obviously, and uh, got through the quarter against Mark Lacamar from uh, France and then had a big match up this morning against Jackson Baker, the two powerhouses. And then, you know, got uh, got the nod over Jackson, made himself, got himself into the final against Jacob Wilcox, and, and that was always going to be a, an incredible goofy foot final. Here we go with Cole's road to the final. Starting right here, Cole Hauschman, Jess, oh. no matter what the conditions, was able to put down excellent numbers. Yeah, when he was putting eights down in conditions like this and, and this type of surfing and the depth of his bottom turns, we saw the tilt of that final bottom turn. But that, that right there was the start of the clue of the champ for this. Like, that was the start of it where you're like, he's going to he's gonna go all the way. Took out Mark Lockemar in that quarterfinal. Small conditions here to take over and defeat Mark Lockemar, Richie. Yeah, you know, he was really on, uh, really from the start of the event. And um, even when we had these little rides at uh, Alley Rides, he was just looking so energetic and uh, really using that big frame to his advantage. Then today, Jess, the waves came up and they were pretty big in the morning. Cole Hauschman threw down the hammer. This could easily have been like the best highlight clip of surfing that I've seen. Like, look at these turns, they're huge. The amount of, of depth he gets out of his bottom turns and the power, like, there's nothing else to say except perfection for me from this. It's just beautiful, big surfing, and, <laughs> and you could feel it, couldn't you, Richie? The vibe coming in pretty early. Yeah, absolutely. Deep bottom turns, really picking those uh, perfect spots to execute the big turns, and every turn was big. You know, the CT level surfing, without a doubt. That was a 9.8. Combine that with a 9.17. Cole Hauschman, congratulations from the 2% crew. 18.97, two wave total out of a possible 20. That's peaking in the final. Yeah, really, that's how you want to uh, script it, and that's what he, do. he followed through with it, you know? And uh, you, you can think about doing that all you like, but to actually put it into play, that's, a, that's another story. And congratulations to Jacob Wilcox as well. He had a great event, and this is, you know, a, a, a big result for his pathway onto the championship tour. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's got 10,000 points. He's got a wild card into stop number six of the championship tour. That's the Surf Ranch Pro presented by 805. Uh, that's just a bonus, just on mm. top of already this big 10,000 points and vaulting up the rankings on the Challenger Series. Yeah, I, he's going to be so overwhelmed today with emotions just seeing that. But he really risked it. He risked everything, and not just in the heats, but every single turn he put into this competition was was either you know ones or tens for me. So I think he's well deserved, and and there's so much more to come from him. All right, well, let's make it official right now. I'm going to go to Ron Blakey for the presentation. Thank you, Kaipo. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the official presentation for the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy. What did you think of our finals and their performances? They were incredible. Please put your hands together for our competitors. Now, before we go any further, the WSL and all involved with the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonsoy would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians, the Guillaumical and the Gadigal people and their country on which we gather here today. We pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging 
and uh, we acknowledge First Nations peoples here today and those joining us on the broadcast. We love this area, it's got a great energy to it and New South Wales dished up incredible conditions all week. We want to say a huge shout out to the local community, the North Narrabeen board riders in particular. Please put your hands together for them. An incredible, An incredible club, incredible hosts. Every time we bring the world's best surfers here, you guys turn out and cheer them on. So thank you very much. We also want to acknowledge the competitors in this contest, not just our finalists here today, but also those who've battled through those first two events of the Challenger Series. We wish you all the best of luck for the rest of the Challenger Series season. Can we get another big round of applause for all our competitors, please? They love turning up and putting on a great show for you all. We also want to thank Destination New South Wales and the Northern Beaches Council, GWM, our title partner for this event, Bonsoy, our presenting partner for this contest, and thank our other partners, Yeti, NRMA Parks and Resorts, who hosted many of the, uh, the surfers and our crew this week over here at Narrabeen. It's a great destination and everyone had a great time. Bailey Ladders, BioGlan, Harvey Norman, Bond University, Oakberry, Coopers and Boost Mobile. Thank you very much. Can we get a round of our applause for our partners who helped make these events possible? We also want to thank the North Narrabeen Surf Lifesaving Club for their support. Surfing New South Wales, Luke Madden and his team do an amazing job. And the surfers who share this incredible place with us as fans and uh, all of you who gave us way in the lineup this week. It wasn't easy, the waves were absolutely firing. Some of the best car park rides we've seen. And we also want to thank you guys, the fans. Like I said, uh, amazing support all week for our competitors. They rise, they lift their performances when they can hear you cheering from the beach. So thanks again for uh, ditching work and ditching school and coming out to uh, cheer these guys on. Put your hands together for yourselves. To help me hand out the trophies today, I have Will Hayden-Smith, who uh, had the very easy job of calling the event on each day. Yesterday it was a tough call, but uh, Will, fantastic job this week, and uh, we had some amazing finals, so well done. We've also got the Northern Beaches Council Mayor, Sue Hines. Sue, great to have your support, and uh, thanks for joining us once again. Now we're going to get into it. All right. On the men's side, we saw amazing performances, and this guy has been campaigning for a long time, trying to crack the code on the Challenger Series to give himself a great chance of getting onto the Championship Tour full-time. He had a, a magic run through this event. He put together some great heats. It didn't go his way today in the final, but we're expecting him to have a fantastic year in 2023. Put your hands together for the runner-up in the GWM Sydney Surf Pro, presented by Bonsoy. It's Western Australia's Jacob Wilcox. Made an incredible run through these uh, first two Challenger Series events. You've set yourself up really well this year. Uh, the move to the East Coast must be a difficult one sometimes, but it's paid off. You're surfing great. How's it feel? Yeah, it feels actually pretty good. Last year, I started these two events. I lost first round <laughs> in both of them, so this is a lot different this year. Um, oh, that was a fun final with um, Cole. He's surfed so well, and the conditions are actually really challenging. I got so smashed a few times, but it was... Um, Really good to be able to surf in a bit of power. And yeah, um, I've got to say thank you to the Moffat family for letting me stay with them all week. And um, all the guys from Surfing Australia, um, Botsy, Pete and Noodles for helping me out in the event. Um, probably couldn't be here holding this trophy without them. So thanks heaps for that. And thank you for the WSL for putting on the event and everybody for coming down. Cheers. Please put your hands together for Jacob Wilcox, mate. Wishing you all the best for a fantastic campaign on the rest of the Challenger Series. And we can't wait for your next free surfing edit to drop too. Bring it on. It's coming. All right. On the women's side, we had uh, amazing performances. And when the swell picked up, things really got interesting. Car park rights was absolutely firing when the, uh, the move came there for our, our competitors. And in the first heat down there at car park right in solid conditions, we saw Sally Fitzgibbons tap into a 9.7. She carried the momentum from that heat right through to the final. Put your hands together for the runner-up in the women's GWM Sydney Surf Pro. Moving closer to that top end of the ratings on the Challenger Series, Sally Fitzgibbons. Congratulations, Sal. 
Well done. An amazing run through the contest. It was just seemed to be flowing your way. You didn't get the victory, but you are really setting yourself up well on this Challenger Series now. Oh, cheers, Ronnie. This uh, trophy is super special. It's such a journey to get to a podium these days. Um, so proud of the women's tour. It's um, so hard fought, and any of the women deserve to be up here this week. Um, yeah, they're so brave and, and courageous, dug deep. We had so many different conditions, but um, just so proud to call this home and, and you guys embrace us, the community down the beach. Um, oh, for me, you guys were the trophy this week, uh, the big trophy. And, and um, yeah, to get Bella up for the win and an Aussie victory, uh, that's awesome. Amazing. Uh, Sal, did you ever leave the contest site this week? Because you had so many responsibilities here at the contest, but uh, it just seemed like you couldn't get away from the joint. You were loving your time here. I was, I was feeding off the Grom energy. I was in the wedding all day. Um, yeah, they're just so cool, that energy for me. Um, just to see them picking up boards and such a healthy habit surfing. And um, we're so, so proud of all the little Grommies down here at Narrabeen. So thanks for your energy, guys. Unbelievable. Put your hands together for Sally Fitzgibbons, moving right up there to the top end of the Challenger Series ranks. A semi-final and a second place finish to kick off her Challenger Series campaign. She's heading back to the CT, surely. Yeah, we do. Oh, she's gearing up. Look out, Sue. All right. Man, oh man, uh, amazing performances, as I said, from all our competitors. But this guy has been in special form this year. He's been campaigning on the Challenger Series for some time prior to this event. His best result was a ninth. But it just never looked like he wasn't going to crack the final here today. Cole Hauschman your champion of the GWM Sydney Surf Pro, presented by Bonsoy. What a run in the contest. Don't forget the trophy, mate. Well, a big man deserves a big trophy. They don't get much bigger than that. Unbelievable. Get over here, Cole. Congratulations, mate. First chat. Nice to meet you, firstly. Uh, an amazing run through this contest. What's it feel like, breaking through and getting a win on such a difficult tour? Um, yeah, this tour is insane. There's a lot of good surfers and a lot of people who deserve to be on tour. And yeah, I'm pretty speechless, honestly. It's a, you always go into these events thinking you want to win, but it's a lot more challenging. So stoked to break away and uh, get my first win. That was one of the most unbelievable finals performances that we've ever seen, mate. Uh, obviously, this event you know it's joining a, a list of iconic uh, events that have unfolded here at Narrabeen that the greats have taken out you've put in yourself in, in fantastic company but you're also charging up the challenger series rankings and for those of you that didn't know there was a big bonus for Cole in cracking this final he's actually got himself a spot in his first CT event he's going to be competing at the Surf Ranch Pro put your hands together for that <laughs> mate what a huge bonus how are you feeling about that big that big ticket yeah, it's a bit of icing on the cake. I wasn't really sure uh, what the rankings were going into the, today, but yeah, I'm stuck. Looking forward to it, and I guess I'm flying home soon. So, <laughs> mate, you had incredible, incredible support, and everyone sticking out. Uh, maybe the the best validation of the support you had was the fact that they had to carry your humongous frame up here to the podium. Uh, tell us about the crew that you're travelling with, and just how much it means for them to to cheer you to the the podium like this. Yeah, shout out to all the 2% boys. It's uh, everyone I grew up with, and Kolohe kind of started it all. So, um, yeah, it's been insane. We've been pushing each other at every event. Crosby and Jet got a semis at Snapper. And, yeah, everyone's just pushing each other, and it's pretty cool to see everyone doing so well. Awesome, mate. Uh, this venue, it's been good to you this week. Incredible waves. What do you have to say to the, uh, the hometown crowd? Yeah, thank you to everyone here who watched all week. And... The waves have been insane. Every day we were scoring. And shout out to Jacob, who was ripping all event. You had me scared going into the final. So, uh, yeah, it's been fun. I'll definitely be back. And thanks to everyone. Your champion, Cole Hauschman. An unbelievable performance in the final, dropping a couple of nine-point rides. And he is also climbing up the ladder and getting himself closer to a CT spot. Well done, mate. That leaves one. Now, the, uh, the championship tour, it is uh, a brutal place. You've got to get results early in those first five events. And last year, Is Isabella Nichols was able to save herself with a victory at the Margaret River Pro to keep her place on the CT. Uh, obviously, heartbreaking 
to fall below the cut line at the fifth stop and hard to rally so quickly. But just in the, her second Challenger Series event, she has come away with a win. Give her a big round of applause. Your champion for the GWM Sydney Surf Pro, Isabella Nichols. An amazing effort. <laughs> she had to rally. She had to rally emotionally, and then she obviously came up against one of the toughest competitors in the Challenger Series draw to earn this victory. Get over here. Oh, she's going to hoist it. We'll save it. We'll save it. I don't want to get covered in beard. Not yet. But Isabella, congratulations. That must feel so incredible. I know it's been a journey, and you said after the final that you weren't even sure if you were going to be able to compete in this event. So uh, where's your head at now? Uh, what a roller coaster this sport is, honestly. Um, so many lows, so many highs, but that's the reason why we get into it, you know. That's a, it, it's the feeling of living. Um, and it's been such a crazy week. I wouldn't have been able to get here without a bunch of people. Um, obviously, Kurt Jacobs, uh, Matty Granger, the froth master from Narrow Venue. He, um, he bring me out of my little um, slump that I've been in, along with all the crew from Surfing Oz, Bottle, um, Pete, Dimmy for having us as well, legend. Um, and then, yeah, surfing against one of my really good friends, Fitzy, it's always, always a pleasure. Sh pleasure. She's, um, she's killing it at the moment. And I'm excited to hopefully be back on tour with her next year. Unbelievable, yeah. A an amazing run through this contest. And we knew it was going to take a, a performance uh, from a competitor that was able to adapt con to all conditions. A and you really faced all conditions. Just what you surfed in yesterday compared to what you were facing today. How hard was it to, to switch into that big wave mindset and uh, completely change things up? It was small wave surfing yesterday. Yeah, honestly, like the whole week's been such a mixed bag. Before the contest, it was small lefts and it was really fun and I was excited for that. And then we had car park rights, we had alley rights and then big bombing lefts. But I just tried to go into um, these days with not too much in my mind. And um, the nerves started creeping in today for sure. I think the size of the swell for me, I was definitely very, very anxious. We copped a couple pretty crazy sets on the head and not gonna lie, I was, I was yelling a little bit, screaming. <laughs> um, but it was, it was fun and it's good to challenge yourself in some, some solid lefts and yeah, it was a good day. An unbelievable day, another big win for you. You're charging up the Challenger Series ratings. It seems like your head's gonna be in a good spot heading into the next stop over in South Africa. I mean, it's just crazy how things can fluctuate so quickly. So I've just, I've got a month now. I'm going to go on holidays. I haven't been on holidays for a very long time. So I might go as far inland as I possibly can, get away from the ocean for a bit, maybe Uluru. Um, and yeah, just enjoy my time at home and reset for the next one. Unbelievable. Isabella Nichols, your champion of the GWM Sydney Surf Pro. We're going to get our competitors up here. You guys can hoist your trophies. We're going to have that Cooper's moment. But Kaipo, I'll throw it back to you for the post show. Uh, thank you very much, Ron. And yeah, Isabella Nichols, Cole Hauschman, a uh, well-deserved victory here at the GWM Sydney Surf Pro presented by Bonzoi. These, uh, all these surfers that have made the podium, I mean, deserve because like Isabel said, you had to come through an incredibly diverse challenge through these last six days here at this event. Yeah, it's, um, it's kind of not what I had pictured <laughs> <laughs> when I thought about Narrabeen and, and, you know, typically your mind just goes to these nice, playful, fun left-handers that are just, you know, cruising down the bank and nice performance surfing, but we got everything but that, really. Um, mm. So it was great to, just to see such a variety of, of different waves and how the competitors adapted, and I think we got worthy champions. Oh, we sure did. Well, we took a look at the men's bracket. Let's take a look at our women's bracket uh, here for stop number two on the Challenger Series and Isabella Nichols. Like she said, had to deal with some different conditions in each one of these challenges. Uh, the quarterfinals yesterday afternoon in a storm. I mean, the semifinals yesterday afternoon in a storm, and then big bombing lefts for the final, Jess. Yeah, and you can just see a perfect example of presence's power for her. From that quarterfinal all the way through to this very final, it was her presence that got her the win. Here's a replay, too, of her road to the final. This is the different little um, alley right conditions that they had to contend with, and she just picked this thing apart. She was really well-timed. She readjusted throughout each wave in every single heat she had, and that presence is what gave her the win, Kaipo. Great surfing here. This was to overcome Teresa Bonvalot, 
in the quarterfinals at Alley Wrights. Yeah, then a, things got tricky as she hit the beach and had to set up for this for the semifinals, Rich, against India Robinson. Yeah, sorry about that, Kaipa. This is when that uh, that gale force wind picked up and, and it, you know, it just went from from sort of zero to ten uh, in, in terms of what our competitors were dealing with here. Very, very tricky conditions and then uh, she did get, get the win there. And uh, then this is what she had to deal with today. Big bombing conditions, but was able to fish out this one. Great performance, goes excellent here, an 8.17 in the final, Jess. Yeah, that second turn right there, that was the money for her, and you could see she could almost feel the celebration, and there's the Aussie contingent. Of course, Sally Fitz, Ellie and Gabby Spake cheering her up for the win, and it's a, it, you can see the relief as well, and there's the ring of fire. <laughs> Taking a look at our numbers here for the women's final and that 8.17 just glaring at me, Rich. Yeah, that was really the difference. Um, Isabella finding that, that one little gem that offered her those big two turns. Uh, and Sally was looking, she was hunting and just couldn't find that one little magic wave. Yeah. Well, we've had a couple of events now on the Challenger Series, and uh, now it's all setting up. And we have a, some strong starts from some of our surfers. Let's take a look at our Challenger Series rankings after two events for the women. Here it comes, India Robinson out in the lead, a first and a third, leaving the Australia leg, and Sally Fitz also with a strong, strong Australian leg. Isabel Nichols sitting at number three, Jess. Yeah, how well did this play into her hand? That is a huge um, points total to be going into the next half of the Challenger Series. It's really big for her, but I mean, Sawyer Limblad, Alyssa Spencer too, um, really, really close there. Like, they had such good performances over the last two events, so I think that uh, they're very dangerous. Yeah, absolutely. And, and just sort of down the bottom there, Macy Callahan and Luana Silva. Uh, for me, you know, in particular, Luana Silva's putting in some really good surfing at the moment, and she hasn't just quite cracked those top results, but. You know, we, we can't not give recognition to India Robinson right up the top of the, the ratings there and, and doing very well. Take a look at our men's Challenger Series rankings. Jacob Wilcox just on top. Yeah, it's the Wilcox effect for him throughout this whole event, except for that final, but it's got him into that 12,000 plus points range against people like, you know, Imai Kalani and Sammy Pupo. I mean, you can think of their performances over the last two events and think of how incredible it is, but it's the consistency of Wilcox that has him up there at the top. Yeah, it's a, a great performance, a great start of the year for Jacob Wilcox. Coming so close to qualifying year in and year out. This could be his year. Emi Kalani DeVault, he wants back on the championship tour along with Sammy Pupo. And could we have a new rookie on tour? Cole Hauschman, well, he's on his way. Wow. Yeah, that's a, that's a great looking leaderboard, no <laughs> doubt about it. There's so much going on there. But um, for Jacob, you know, he was a, a totally different. He was like on page two or three this time last year. So, you know, once you're up there, you don't mm. want to slide down the ladder. And, and I feel like that fire just gets burning even a little brighter once you, your name's at the top of that ratings. It's been a wild event, right? So every day, we've had six days of competition. Every day we've seen excellent scores. Along six days. Yeah. But let's take a look at our <laughs> wave of the day, our Boost Mobile wave of the day, because it was one to cherish. This is a 9.8. Look at the surfing here of Rich of Cole Hauschman. That first turn was on a big wave, so high risk. And then the second turn just so cupped out. It was a really difficult section. And he was just in attack mode on that wave from, from start to finish did not let uh, his foot come off the accelerator at all. Yeah, that, it's, it's what a post show we're having. We got, we got more to talk about. Uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we have our top five that you want to check out. We'll be back with more of the WSL post show right after this.
Check this, the upcoming Surf Ranch Pro presented by 805 Beer is offering a once in a lifetime opportunity for surf fans. At the end of competition, two lucky winners, one from general admission and one from VIP will be selected at random to surf a wave at the Surf Ranch. Winners will each get one right and one left all to themselves. You must be on site Sunday, May 28th to win the prize. The event runs May 27th and May 28th. Get your tickets at surfranchpro.com. Wow. That's so <laughs> radical. I'm nervous for whoever wins that. That yeah. competition, that'd be like Wimbledon final going off and then getting pulled out of the crowd and going, here, here, hit a couple of balls. It's like, <laughs> That's wow. exactly what, what it would an be opportunity. like, The sound of the motor in Lamar oh, will get your <laughs> adrenaline going, won't it? we got some lucky surf fans, though, that uh, are going to check that out. That's stop number six on the championship tour. And uh, talking about stop number six on the championship tour, we're going to get into our top five moments of the event, and we're going to start with... Some of the wild cards who came through this event and will be surfing at that Surf Ranch Pro. Sawyer Lindblad will be there. Yeah, look at this. I love no better story than an uh, underdog upset, so. Jet Schilling's gonna be there, Rich. Yeah, Jet's, uh, well, he's already had a start at the, at the Surf Ranch event, so he'd be keen to get back there. And uh, great experience for him. Obviously, the championship tour is where he wants to be and he's gonna get a taste of it again. I call him, I'm going to call him Mr. Excellent from now on. Cole Hauschman, he's going to be at the Surf Ranch and imagine him hammering those machine-like rights just like that. Oh, you could see it settling into his face at the presentation too, the realisation there's no more Northern Beaches holiday. It's straight back to the States and he's got competition. <laughs> Number four on the top five today are Bonsoi Legends Heat TC. Still got it. So does Pauline. Yeah, this was a pretty special experience for uh, not only these legends, but for all our spectators that have, you know, watched these heroes of ours uh, evolve. And, you know, life after tour, it's, uh, it's pretty special. And they're all surfing so well still. Big bad Bob Bain right here on the backhand. Yeah, good sense of community in the surf community, isn't it, too, when you watch these Bonsoi legends just hit at it wave for wave, still with the competitive spirit well and truly alive. Yeah, yeah Tommy great. Carroll giving plenty back to the young grommets in the area as well. Number three, 9.7 for this barrel. Sally Fitz, she looked like she was on her way to the final from the first heat. Yeah, back to that World Championship Tour level performance for her against Sally Kelly. It was a big barrel and it was well received by the amount of crowd on the beach. Number two, our women's champ, Isabella Nichols. Yeah, tough conditions, but Isabella found some amazing waves out there in the final, really having to, uh, you know, dig deep, find some courage, and she found some great sections to work with as well. And uh, some beautiful surfing here. She's back after a, a, a really rough period, but uh, back into that winning feeling, and you can see her whole mindset, her whole, uh, you know, surfing experience has just been completely shifted around. <laughs> And number one, Mr. Excellent. Yeah, he's been going excellent all event long. Number one, Cole Hauschman, Jess. Yeah, wow is exactly what you said, Kaipo, and that's what this guy is. If you weren't a fan of him before, you will be now, and I cannot wait to see him throw down his forehand and his backhand at the ranch. Like, look at this thing. It's just a highlights reel. It's the best of the best surfing, and <laughs> I absolutely love this guy, Rich. Yeah, just power surfing on edge, on rail, full tilt. And with maneuvers like that, he is gonna be a threat at the surf ranch. He does big surfing, it really is. We keep saying it, mm. it's CT level surfing that this guy is producing. And uh, what a big step. It's a uh, you know massive leap up the ratings for him. And uh, one step closer to making that dream come true. Authentic guy too. I was really, really blown away by his authenticity in those post heats. Like he really looked into your eyes and he was so present the whole time. I thought he was an outstanding athlete in this competition. Yeah, well, next stop you guys, May 27th, May 28th, the Surf Ranch. It's gonna be a rumble in Lamore. And you know what, Rich? 
The forecast is looking good. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> so if we could maybe, uh, you know, just look at the wind is really all we need to look at, huh? But mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be incredible stuff. Obviously, totally different to what we have out here. It's a different style of surfing. Definitely exciting. And, uh, yeah, keen to see it go down. Yeah, we have that new format with uh, nighttime eliminations. You're yeah. going to be want, want to watch it out. But thank you, Jess. Thank you, Rich. It's been a Thank wonderful you. event with both of you folks. Thank you all for watching as well. Uh, we'll see you in Lemoore. Meanwhile, enjoy our event highlights. Aloha. Good morning from North Narrabeam. This is the second stop on the Challenger Series. Oh, that's oh. Yeah. There's some of that frustration. And hangs oh. on for the finish. Mikey Madonna's got a tail pad and three fins. <laughs> Only one dangerous, call me the revolution. Teach the class, no substitution. Greatest of all time, no dispute. And mercy's over, it's time for retribution. Miguel is gonna go to the corrupt flip. Wow. Well, eight, six, seven. I hit, I'm louder, I hit the sweet spot. You hit the sour, that time is over. Welcome to ours, this is not a game. No time to play, watch out, move out the way. I'm your king, you must obey all challengers. You got to pay, I'm too fast, too fly, too funny. Mignot with a late charge. Vamos! I'm ready, so tell me who wants it. Osborne. Somehow squeaks out. I think he claims it a little bit early. Oh. Oh. Pop up the value, fill up the cups. I love the girls coming in looking for the fire. Staring at the pumps and the humps and thighs. I like that. You like that? You like that? Wow. Oh. Oh. He deals with some like seaweed, some like foam. That. We like that. Oh, finds a vision, oh. finds an exit. Oh, oh that was a heavy wipeout. Come on. Load up, drive up into the section. Competitors are going to be walking in the footsteps of absolute surf royalty. We on the W, we on the champagne. Let's try, baby. Going to the air. Oh, it's an impressive heat score total for the Frenchman. Really solid performance. He'd have one thing on his mind now. A bit of a victory lap here for Morgs. This is what you're in this for. This is what you've trained for. These are the situations that you think of when you go to sleep at night. The Sally Fitzgibbon, strong. Bella Kenworthy just controlled this heat. Great result there for Jackson Baker. Cole Hauschman is through to the semi-finals here. They're getting to know the name of Marco Mignot. Jacob Wilcox, horn makes it official. Just had a really rapid deterioration in conditions. We're gonna do a call tomorrow. We had to clip the event. We were planning on running through the finals, but look at what we got today. Jackson Baker, look at this thing. It is all decided for Cole Hauschman. We're going to see him in the final. It's been a, almost an expression session with Jacob Wilcox, and we've thoroughly enjoyed it. It will be Jacob Wilcox who's moving through to the final. goal of coming back onto the Challenger is to try and unlock my best surfing under that pressure. When you're at your lowest, like that's when you find grit and determination. I've discovered so many things about myself that I thought I already knew, but I didn't. This copyrighted event broadcast is produced by the World Surf League for broadcast around the world and may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the written consent of the World Surf League.